Dear colleagues, co-workers and friends, uh, welcome to the panel discussion on self-employability and entrepreneurship in the Western Balkans. In this one and a half hour, we will talk about entrepreneurship as a sustainable possibility of employment of young people in our region. Our goal here today is to summarize key findings on youth entrepreneurship in the, West, in the Western Balkan countries, how developed it is, what more needs to be done, and to identify good practices and experiences we can learn from. My name is Aika Rovčanin. I work on employment and entrepreneurship programs and initiatives in the Institute for Youth Development Cult. Uh, before I introduce my dear panelists today, uh, let us show you a short video of uh, grantees and their results from Web4Yes initiative. Mission A Group was founded in 2011 with the aim to focus their activities on environmental protection and to provide contribution to sustainable development in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The association was founded by experienced and professional people who have decided to influence the raising of awareness uh, about the environment. E Group has implemented numerous projects in the field of waste management, energy efficiency and entrepreneurship. The project Development of Entrepreneurial and Business Skills at Young People was launched with the aim of strengthening the capacity of civil sector while improving the employment of young people, especially women in Zenca Doboj Canton. The project sought to influence the capacity of civil society organizations, then to provide support for youth employment and to development of entrepreneurial skills at young people. Our biggest challenge during the project implementation was actually how to organize trainings, given that the uh, pandemic COVID-19 had a negative impact to the whole world, including our project. We had a dilemma on uh, what way we should continue uh, our project implementation. Fortunately, with the help of digital technologies, we were able to successfully complete our project. Uh, what we would say to young people is that they need to believe in themselves and not to give up on their dreams and ideas. The project has provided young people with a springboard and we hope that in the future they will be able to establish their own companies because it's really possible and it just takes more effort. Delhi Space for Creative Activity is the first co-working space in south of Serbia or how we like to say the first co-working space in south of Belgrade. It was founded in July of 2015 with only one goal at a time and it was to become the center of creativity in city of Niš. And it has become. Delhi is a co-working space, event center and a youth incubator. A famous architect from city of Niš once said that Delhi is a space that connects. And Delhi actually is a place where good people and people with vision can connect very easily and the people who share the same value and the same mission. Project idea of Creativity for All, which we organized in a partnership with the Tuzla Live from Bosnia, was dedicated to creative industries. A general goal of the specific project was to encourage young people in advanced technologies through the education and support. We increased the level of information of young people regarding the creative industries in both City of Niš and City of Tuzla using the media campaign. We have also increased the competence in hiring more than 400 young people, which attended 14 dinners organized in City of Niš and City of Tuzla. During the final conference, we have presented six startup ideas which happened during this project. The biggest and actually the only problem was the uh, pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, the last lecture uh, had to be organized using the live stream and although it went pretty well, face-to-face -face interaction is something that is uh, actually priceless. Um, the final conference, uh, which was dedicated to meeting of young people of both Niš and Tuzla, was not public and this was the biggest loss for all. To believe and follow their dreams and if they don't know how to fulfill them, they can always visit Delhi. We are waiting. Our organization was founded in 2015 and the last five years we work on a rural development, environmental protection and improving position of the young people. 
the goals of our project, uh, entrepreneurship for young people, join now was to improve the business uh, environment for the young people, to uh, provide them uh, business knowledge and skills, and to help them to convert their business idea to the business plan. Uh, on this project, we succeed to wrote 24 different business plans for the young people. 46 young people attend uh, the workshops about uh, writing business plan, implementation of business plan, non-formal non, uh, learning and about the basic knowledge and skills that they need to start their own business. Also, we, in cooperation with the municipality Kolashin and Mojkovac, we wrote two strategies, actions plan for young people that define the uh, youth policy in the next four years in th these uh, two municipalities. Also, we wrote many uh, draft of the decision and send it to the local, local council to, uh, to be uh, voted for. Uh, what we want to say that during this uh, project, the, the main uh, challenge was the COVID-19 pandemic because many of the activities we cannot, we, we, we were not able to per perform on the right way. And uh, what we want to say to the young people is that, is that they uh, try to uh, follow their dreams and to, to be uh, persi persistent in their, in their way to achieve the, in the, the financial and economical independence through private business. Youth Business Forum is an NGO that was started in 2014 and uh, until now we are working on development of youth entrepreneurship in Serbia and also on creating new employment opportunities for young people. So first of all, I would like to uh, thank all of the project partners for uh, giving us this opportunity to participate in this project and to meet all of you, the organizations who participated and to share uh, our knowledge and experiences with you. So regarding our project, uh, we had two main goals. Uh, first of them was to create a, a document that's going to show the overview of the whole entrepreneurial ecosystem of Serbia in order for us to truly understand what are the needs of uh, young entrepreneurs. And this document is going to serve us uh, for a policy initiatives we are preparing uh, and it's regarding uh, to uh, defining the term of young entrepreneur. The other main uh, point of this project was to create a methodology that's going to support uh, young people uh, from their path from business idea to go to market strategy step by step. So we had an opportunity to work with 22 teams that created their go to market strategy and uh, now we are mentoring five of them next six months. So I suppose we were all sharing the same challenges during the pandemic and for us it was that we had to translate the whole in-person training into an online but I'm sure that we all managed to make successful projects and uh, I would like to leave you with this thought and I truly think that uh, anything is possible if you just keep moving forward and if you truly love what you do. So kind regards from Belgrade to all of you. The mission of our organization is to create an enabling environment for proper growth and development of young children and uh, people, uh, programs and projects that will help them in that, as well as enhancing personal, professional and practical knowledges and uh, skills. Our project V1 Empowered Brave Authentic was about enhancing employability for young women and girls in rural communities uh, through education on entrepreneurship, uh, career guidance and social uh, skills, understanding the rights of young uh, women and girls, as well as empowering them for independent decision making and active participation in communities. We've gathered the 19 young girls uh, that went through these educations throughout six-day training. Uh, we've conducted, the, conducted research on uh, public policies in local communities for employment and also uh, made a report uh, regarding a gender perspective. We've included uh, three local representatives in this research and 90 young women.
Uh, the main challenge we faced was uh, to maintain interest and motivation of young uh, girls uh, to uh, participate in all activities during those six months. We were in constant changing of methods and timeline according to participants' possibilities. Don't miss any opportunity uh, to progress and improve yourself to move your boundaries and examine every opportunity for advancement. Use every chance that comes your way to gain additional knowledge, skills and experience related to your personal and professional development. Till next time, safe, stay safe and well. Dear guests, welcome back to our panel. I hope you enjoyed in this short video, which, which you can also see later again. Uh, before I uh, go, go to our panelists today, let me remind you that you can post your questions in chat box option and the panelists will answer it later. And now let me introduce you to our panelists to, today. Uh, Božena Stešević, Program Manager from Association for Democratic Prosperity Z. Hello, Božena. Hello, hello. Uh, Jan Zlatan Kulenović, Director of Programs from Regional Youth Cooperation Office. Hello, Jan. Hello, everyone. Darko Radičanin, Executive Director from Junior Achievement in Serbia. Hello, Darko. Hello, Aika. And Goran Radlovacki, project assistant at Improvement of Im Employability Program from Belgrade Open School. Uh, Darko, as you and we all know, there is a never ending dilemma. Are entrepreneurs being born as such or they become as such? So is entrepreneurship a skill that can be taught? Uh, yeah, hello everyone. Thank you for the question because it gives me the opportunity also to represent junior achievement, you know, like kind of as the worldwide biggest organization for, for entrepreneurial learning and, and financial literacy. Uh, program is old, 100 years, you know, like kind of as of last year, you, and it's proven system, you know, like kind of how you are developing as a, as a, as a community, how you're developing entrepreneurial skills with, uh, with your, with your, uh, population. The thing is in entrepreneurial education starting, you know, like kind of from the beginning and yes, the, our belief is that entrepreneurs are made, you know, like kind of not born. Of course, the right answer would be uh, both of them, you know, like kind of, but uh, for sure you can, you can teach people entrepreneurship. The thing is, you know, like kind of what is the element, you know, like kind of of the entrepreneurship and how we understand the philosophy of of of, uh, of of entrepreneurship, the the concept of student company as a particular program, you know, like kind of an old program, entrepreneurial learning programs which are implementing in a, in the schools, 
or an educational systems is exactly to teach them how to put the idea into the action. You know, I kind of think it's very simple. And from all uh, different uh, 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 quotes about the entrepreneurship or definitions of entrepreneurship, I mean, the one which is the most common today is that, 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 that you, you are, as an entrepreneur, you're creating, you know, a kind of an added value. It doesn't matter if it's in a, in a sense of money, but this in the sense of you know a kind of added value that you attributed to the to the community and the broader society and you, and you know a kind of in a, in a humanity. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean that, that I mean it's really uh, how you treat you know a kind of young people to get them into the system go for them through to go through the system and then get out you know like kind of with the with the with readiness you know like kind of to understand the basic principles you know like kind of of how they should be free to create a new idea and be you know like kind of feel fear feel uh, fearless you know like kind of about making the mistakes you know like kind of and running around and when they when they fall they get up you know like kind of but but doing that very happy you know, like kind of doing that with the, with the freedom of, you know, like kind of making their own decision, you know, like kind of how they will manage their business and, you know, like kind of their people and their, their employees. Uh, from your experience, I asked Goran, uh, why are they afraid of, of starting their own business? I mean, in, <clears throat> I would say here, you know, like kind of in, 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 in this part of the world, you know, like kind of, they're afraid because they never taught they never been taught about it you know like kind of their parents are not the good examples you know like of of, of entrepreneurship you know like because they were they were growing in this in a specific system you know like kind of or, or you, you know kind of pretty much safe you know like kind of in a sense of of uh, but then when everything fall apart you know like kind of we got lost you know like, i mean as a, as a, as a, as a communities and and it's it's somebody would say it's not in our genetics, you know, like kind of we don't be. I mean, I don't believe that that that's the case, you know. Like kind of this is something that that you just you just need to to make more runners, you know, like kind of for for the specific things that they have the goal to 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 put their idea into the action, you know, like kind of this is the moment that you need. So I believe that our kids still doesn't have. The thing is now with the upcoming generation, you know, like kind of in the, in the future period, uh, kids which are born after 2006, you know, like kind of 2005, after, after that, they have totally different setup as opposed to, to the, all the generations once. It is very hard to explain them, you know, like kind of that uh, in uh, ancient history, people people didn't have electricity, you know, like kind of, so it's it's, it's for them to make that switch in the head, you know, like kind of to see that 4.0 for them is just the beginning, you know, like kind of, so we need to adapt also ourselves, you know, like kind of to give them tools, how to put their ideas, because this is actually what the new generation is, you know, like they want to put their ideas into the first place and they're just, we need to give them tools how to, how to do it. Uh, thank you for pointing this out and I believe that other panelists also agree with you and me that uh, entrepreneurs are being taught they are not being born as such and this is a skill that can be taught. Um, so please can you, I think you're the, the most invited panelist here to explain the concept of entrepreneurial learning. What is that? Uh, why is important to have entrepreneurial learning in a formal system? And is it early to start teaching children in primary schools to adopt this concept, entrepreneurial learning? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, uh, it's not early. You know, I kind of in a, in a junior achievement worldwide has the programs from the early, I mean, actually, actually preschool, you know, I kind of, yeah you know, kind of from basically from five to six of age, all the way towards towards early university. So basically two first first two years of the university, because the, the everything over a hundred years showed us, you know, like kind of that that is the time when you can 
really make make the difference for 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 that young young person you know like, because that 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 is the age it's very hard to to change somebody's uh, uh, personal identity after 21 you know like kind of in a, in the sense of uh, of entrepreneurial spirit, you know, like and talking about the developing of entrepreneurial spirit, rather than those who really started business because they lost their job, you know, like and so really developing different different part of part of the society. From what what world um, uh, researches show, the surveys, you know, like kind of showed us in the countries where, where which are operating junior achievement pro programs like like thirty or sixty years. Uh, is that basically from in in general number of young people who are, I mean, who are starting their businesses is X amount you know like kind of for the community but from it's about eight percent you know like on on, on the European level there are some countries with the, with the, with the more but from 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 the target group you know like kind of those who were going through the student company program for example in their their high schools it shows that three times more of them is starting their own business. Their businesses are contributing more in a, in a X, X million of, 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 uh, of euros of, uh, of uh, taxes, you know, like the, the, the thing, I mean, the, the, the entire concepts of their, their, their companies are, are really built on, 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 uh, on, uh, on the different values, you know, like kind of specifically about how we here are, are considering uh, considering entrepreneurship, you know, like kind of their tycoons, you know, like and they're always bad examples, you know, like kind of of what entrepreneur or, or businessman is. So we are as a community, all of us are not giving the good examples of okay. hardworking people in in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a communities, you know, like kind of who developed their businesses over the last thirty years, you know, like kind of and today they're employing hundred people, you know, like kind of from, from their community. That's a big, you know, entrepreneurial story, but nobody is telling these stories, you know, kind of nobody is bringing together these students with, uh, I mean, kids in schools, you know, like kind of with the real people who are really doing something, you know, it's, it's differently considered that they are teacher. So it's important to bring business community and education, not in the sense of uh, dual education, you know, kind of where they will go and work on a specific, you know, a kind of machine or instrument. The thing is for 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 them really to uh, to 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 un un understand, you know, a kind of the 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 the, the process. Okay, so let me just point out it's important to have entrepreneurial learning in a formal system, which your programs do. Actually, you implement it in schools. Did I did I understand this? Yeah, yeah. And it's in, in the schools, they're implemented exclusively through the through the educational system. It has to be in the educational system. It is different, you know, kind of from country to, to country. Is it, you know, like kind of part of the curricula that ministry decided, you know, like kind of to be that, like the case in Albania, but in a case in Serbia, we are accredited extracurricular, you know, like kind of training for the teachers that they can, mm -hmm. that, that they are uh, allowed, you know, like kind of to implement in, in the, their schools as extracurricular activity. Now we are having more, more and more of people who are who are actually te I mean, teachers of the, the class entrepreneurship, which are coming now to, the, to the, our training so they can have the material to implement in a school because it appears to them that they can really teach the kids, you know, like kind of about the entrepreneurship through the fruits through the things when they're working on these specific things of developing product, you know, developing logo, developing all the elements of, of the real business. This is what they are doing in their high school. Right. And then it's important for them to get out and show this idea. And if it's possible for us, all, all, all of us, you know, I kind of to, to, to create the community around you know, I kind of to, 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 to help them raise their idea as high as possible, as high as possible. 
Thank you. I want I, want, I wanted to point this out because uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina we have a lot of non informal, non formal education of entrepreneurship, and uh, we didn't make we didn't make too much progress uh, in entrepreneurial learning in formal system, which is re really important and crucial because it's a continuous process. Uh, let me go to Bosnia. Uh, which, uh, what, what is your opinion on entrepreneurial learning and what is the showcase of Montenegro? Do uh, you have to unmute your microphone, please? I am used to, to be unmuted and muted by others. Okay, um, so uh, greetings to everyone online and here on this um, meeting room. Uh, yes, uh, well, in Montenegro, I think, and we like to say we are the best example how to incorporate entrepreneurial learning in formal system. So we have like from 2008 till today, uh, three strategies uh, focus on uh, entrepreneurial learning and we incorporated in all levels of education formally. So we have it in the preschool education from year three to, to five which is, uh, you know, getting to the basics of uh, so-called entrepreneurial spirit. And then we have it as the cross-curricular te team through the elementary school. And uh, in the uh, so-called vocational school, it is uh, obligational uh, subject in the, in the high schools is uh, uh, how, to, how to call it uh, elective course. So you can choose it to have it. Where the where prob problem comes is uh, it was it was planned that he, that it is incorporated even in the in the high education institutions, and it went through the private ones because they are you know open to those kind of initiatives and the state uh, university is more you know, rigid and it is only in the economic uh, faculties, but it is. Uh, how to say, uh, plan to have it even in non-economic uh, uh, faculties, entrepreneurship as a part of the a part of the uh, curricular entrepreneurial learning. Uh, generally, the system is as such is uh, good um, put and uh, it is connected uh, through the long-term planning process. We have so-called national partnership, which uh, gathers different institutions, public authorities, local administration. Then you have a uh, civil society organization, entrepreneurs and such a, that, that create those, uh, all those strategies that cover a five year period uh, for implementing entrepreneurial learning. But the problem is that the work of those national partnership is based on their own enthusiasm and it's not all, always possible to get the, the best uh, feedback from them if they are not motivated to, to provide it. The, uh, the substantial problems comes when those young people are exiting the uh, educational system because they are uh, the generation that is now the, the main workforce is the, those, I would say, handicapped with, the, uh, with entrepreneurial uh, skills and knowledges and uh, it's making the environment for the newcomers that went through the, I would say, uh, quality system of entrepreneurial learning environment that doesn't support the, the entrepreneurial uh, way of action, way of thinking. And they are like uh, finding the mismatch between the what they learn through the educational system and what they need to implement in the in the in the in the in the um, in the reality. That big mismatch is always the problem and it shows the lack of planning when the, when the when the introduction of entrepreneurial uh, learning was put in the in the formal system because it did it didn't uh, involve the the state of play uh, in the in the in the market they didn't uh, meet the i would say requirements that is necessary for uh, our uh, how to say economic system which is uh, um, focused on third sector which is ma mainly focused on on services uh, which is uh, very close for the new entrepreneurial initiatives and only thanks to the new technologies in a couple of two or three years. Uh, um, in the last uh, two or three years, we have the possibility to use all what they have learned, that uh, enthusiasm that they are bringing to the, to, the, to the market, that they can maybe come up with something that is outside of the Montenegrin board. So generally, there is a mismatch 
formally everything is great in practice there are problems in implementing it thank you for Bojana, for for this this presentation uh, i see it's a general problem in everything in all, all the programs that somehow it is planned good it is written good but sometimes in practice it's quite different uh, let me now go to uh, Jan. Jan, from the regional perspective, since you are coming from Regional Youth Cooperation Office, uh, what about social entrepreneurship? Uh, how open-minded are youth from the, from the Western Balkan countries to social entre entrepreneurship? Do they actually understand this concept? And, and how do you generally become a social entrepreneur? Uh, from the aspect of this learning process that we mentioned, it's somehow different in comparison, in comparison to a traditional entrepreneur. How do you learn to become social entrepreneur? Thank you, Aika and um, everyone, I mean, for, for this also uh, good opportunity for exchange of uh, different practices and, and ideas. Uh, I, I agree what, what, what Darko and Božina mentioned, I think, uh, previously, and, and maybe I can just link it further. Uh, saying that from uh, RICO perspective as, as, a, as a, let's say, regional institution, for us, it was interesting. Do you hear me? It's, yep. Uh, what, what was interesting for us in, in this particular topic where we are more focused on peace building, uh, intercultural cooperation of young people, uh, was this aspect also of social entrepreneurship, as you said, which is not only business model, it's not only how young people, uh, particularly in this case, can uh, uh, create a profit and can have employment, but also to be focused either on, let's say, vulnerable or marginalized groups or on concrete social impact. So for us, what was interesting as, as let's say, upgrade to the topic on, on youth in entrepreneurship was also how young people for different business models can create certain contribution in societies and create certain social impact. So before I, I, I return uh, concretely on what is the status there, I would just say why this topic is relevant for us and in the region. Number one, we already clear uh, are facing that that uh, youth unemployment is, is, is an issue, it's a need, it's a challenge. And I was remembering that one of my first international conferences yes. where I was uh, attending this topic was uh, 20 years ago in 2000. And, and for me, it was a little bit, you know, self-reflection, how it came out that for 20 years we are dealing with the same issue of youth unemployment. Uh, so what is the same? youth unemployment from 28 percent in albania to 55 plus minus in kosovo all others between second we are dealing what bojina and arko mentioned that the link between education and labor market is weak nothing we are still having curricula that is old-fashioned and we are not developing on the level of knowledge skills and attitudes uh basically nothing enough uh, in our school systems. So that was the same in 2020 and, and today. And the third thing, which is relevant for ICO and everyone, I think, is the brain drain and demographic implications. Why young people with such kind of, let's say, uh, uh, less opportunities are leaving the country where they have more uh, opportunities further. So, so what is, for me, absurd and a little bit cynical is that in these 20 years we are dealing more or less with the same percentages with the same practices and with the same policies but what is new the new is at that time there was no google there was no facebook there was no uber there was no airbnb there was no amazon there was no instagram there was no uh, anything that is now new industry which employs a lot of people that we are dealing with artificial intelligence, with machine learning, with all kind of uh, uh, new uh, uh, stuff, which employs new labor force. And we are stuck in the same thing, like nothing happened. So this is very parallel universe 
where you are doing the same mistakes or not, not doing anything as society. And in the same time, you live in a larger, larger environment in which everything was upside down change. I mean, we are now talking in Zoom. 20 years ago, my conference was with, you know, printed papers with laptop that was 10 kilos heavy and without mobile phone. So, and, and, and the topic which we are dealing is the same. So this is something very wrong. Uh, what is the lessons learned? The lessons learned is probably either we don't have uh, good policies or we didn't put this topic as a priority. One or another. There is no too many options uh, why, why we are not changing economy, education, and then particularly uh, measures. So I don't want to, to of course, underestimate uh, uh, our work and work of our colleagues. I'm also witness, especially with Arco and some other people, how a lot of things improved, but usually those, uh, uh, let's say, uh, changes are coming outside of, of political arena and they contribute, they give practices. A lot of young people, hundreds, thousands, are passing through alternative programs or something that is still not fully integrated, which is good and gives the results but what is the the let's say demographic uh, and, and statistical change is not so uh, relevant uh, in in the large scale numbers and something that we can talk about youth characteristics sorry for this in, in introduction i did just some kind of self-reflection uh due before coming here and for me it was like a bit you know very 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 um strange feeling that 20 years is a lot or not a lot, but you can do either nothing or you can do a lot. Mark, ask Mark Zuckerberg. In 2004, he was maybe not rich than us. And today, look, look, his, look his budget. So uh, to return back on social entrepreneurship, I think we are now in, in something that uh, is new field for us in the last maybe five, 10 years. Uh, where someone uh, figure out that if you have society with a lot of social needs, poor people, vulnerable people, no one take care of them, uh, high unemployment, um, uh, huge uh, percentage of inactive, not unemployed, but inactive <laughs> at labor market uh, young people, that society and government cannot do a lot. So how to tackle the both things, social needs and employment. Social entrepreneurship is one of, let's say, very, you know, still uh, uh, very vague concepts, but more or less it's something that as a result to your question is, is new. Mm -hmm. It has meaning, it can have impact, but it is not solution to have fully youth unemployment uh, change. This is, you know, 1% that can can, can help, but there is reasons to invest and there is reasons to, uh, to link it with general concept what Darko and Bojina was talking about entrepreneurial learning. And then of course, some of those entrepreneurs in the future will be more socially, let's say, uh, uh, sensitive uh, in, in their startups. So Raiko did something that you can find and I can share in chat, uh, uh, very interesting, I think, pilot uh, together with the largest French consortium in social entrepreneurship in the world, which is SOS Group Pulse, uh, with our six selected local incubators, uh, Technopolis from Montenegro, Nešto Više Bosnia, Arno Macedonia, uh, Big Green Fund, uh, Balkan Green Foundation Kosovo, Smart uh, Serbia and Yunus in Albania, to give additional, let's say, regional dimension in their cooperation. We have now 137 uh, young people in our incubation process uh, through six local incubators and uh, around 46 future, I hope, companies or initiatives. Uh, and the reason why we are there, and you can find more on the web, is exactly how to decrease risk behavior because young people number one, will go in, in the gray zone or zone of radicalization, even as a last consequence if they are unemployed. Second, because I, we see that this is regional need. And thirdly, because we think that the social impact is very important 
as a solution to youth unemployment, one of the solutions, and in the same time as a, as a contribution to better region and better societies in which young people will find their future, hope, and not more reasons to go away and, 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 and to leave uh, their homes. So uh, there you can find, so I don't want to go more on, on analysis of the social entrepreneurship problems because they're very similar as any other entrepreneurship topics that Darko and Bojina were talking. It is about lack of institutional support, a lot of administration issues, a lack of skills, mentorship, um, places, bureaucracy, uh, funding, capital funds, uh, legislation. So all these things are described in our study on social entrepreneurship that was published month ago. And uh, I think uh, to deal with entrepreneurship, you are dealing also with social entrepreneurship because its logic is the same, but this is just additional value because if you have, let's say, I'm now in a, in a place today, which is cafe bar, but which is pure business. But if these cafe bars are having, let's say, uh, waiters who are from, uh, let's say, uh, uh, young people who are without uh, opportunities and in particularly employed only here because they cannot be employed because of some vulnerability in some other aspect, then it's the same business, but this one is also supporting someone else. So the point is, uh, the story about social entrepreneurship is the story of the situation of entrepreneurship in general, but with more sensitivity because you are also trying to reach the social impact. And I think both directions are needed in the region, unfortunately, because in case that you have societies and governments that are not supporting social needs or people in social needs, then this is one of the extra uh, option there. So I will stop here, but, but I think uh, it, it is the puzzle uh, that goes uh, together with what was previously also mentioned. Uh, thank you, Jan, for this uh, systematic and critical view, uh, uh, as always from you, coming from you. So let me just sum up. Uh, uh, there is a progress, but slow progress, regarding entrepreneurship policies in the last 20 years. Uh, entrepreneurship maybe wasn't in the top three priorities of our government institutions, of our countries, but, the, but there is a slow progress. Uh, and regarding social uh, entrepreneurship, it's a piece in a puzzle, but an important one that contributes to uh to the problem of uh, employability and uh, the entre entrepreneurship development uh, just we... I ca just one sentence to add what is new opportunity and i think this conference and the project should also seek those opportunities is um uh, this new online and global world because with digital digitalization in general how we can skip the society approach both in education and both in let's say a finding market is these new opportunities so what we are facing in, in in the region now is also to you know shortcut i don't need to get skills in school system unfortunately i'm not getting but i can go on udemy uh, or crucera or wherever uh, and I can do it even the top education on Stanford University, even I'm sitting in a village in Serbia, for example. And this is opportunity that can be bypass and, and you know, uh, a way how young people can create uh, new markets outside the region, but living in the region. I was shocked when I saw young guys, uh, even the company, okay, it's a call center, which is not the best example because you can have it in Bangladesh as they are top outsourcing company but i was shocked for example to see that the call center in one sacramento pizzeria uh, in united states is run in macedonia i mean so people are calling for pizza in sacramento but the guy from macedonia village is answering so this creates new opportunities this is not of course only on that level but I think the entrepreneurship process can help with new digitalization as a new topic, both for education and for the new markets. Uh, thank you, Jan, for bringing this up, this theme of digitalization and innovation. 
Uh, we will come back to this later together also with Božina. And now let me uh, give the word to Goran, which solved the technical issues. Uh, Goran, uh, we spoke here about entrepreneurial learning. And can you tell us uh, what are the main findings of our uh, research in web 4 yes in initiative regarding this uh, entrepreneurial learning? Have we achieved any uh, progress in this component in Western Balkans? Well, for the past five or ten years, all countries in the Western Balkans analyzing this research report have had a worthy move forward in the overall development and promotion of lifelong entrepreneurial learning. Uh, from the evidence gathered, it is suggested that uh, the notion is closely associated with the EU integration processes in the region, and in particular with the view of educational and employment policies uh, harmonization with the EU uh, strategy. Uh, the strategies for entrepreneurial learning were adopted by several Western Balkan countries, uh, such as North Macedonia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, and Montenegro, and uh, made the normative frameworks in the region that support the further development of this topic. Uh, however, Serbia took a slightly different approach and uh, integrated entrepreneurial learning into three other strategic frameworks such as strategy of support to the development of innovative uh, small and medium-sized enterprises and entrepreneurs, uh, national youth strategy, or uh, education strategy uh, lasting until 2020. Regarding the uh, integration of entrepreneurial learning into the formal education system, the greatest pro progress was achieved at the level of secondary education and then higher education. <coughs> Uh, some of good practices in entrepreneurial uh, learning include a uh, higher education institution of uh, University of Novi Sad with more than 100 spin-off companies established by teachers and students throughout the process of education and research and generated uh, a lot of new initiatives, innovations, creative ideas, etc. Um, also, I would include Montenegro as an example of good practice which included in the uh, uh, entrepreneurial learning into pre-primary education as a compulsory program integrated uh, for entrepreneurial learning. Um, nevertheless, uh, I have to mention that uh, more attention is needed on integration of entrepreneurial learning into primary and secondary education in all other and also these countries in the region. Ask you, what are the reasons behind young people in Western Balkans being afraid of starting a business? Well, regarding key obstacles, uh, I, would, I would have to say that young people are mostly afraid of failure, which is linked to the society's perception of uh, failure or not succeeding in uh, launching businesses. Um, this notion is linked to the attitude of uh, media towards uh, young entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs as a whole. Uh, general perception of entrepreneurship through education and other sources in our, in our region lead them to believe that starting a business is something which is reserved only for those who are, who are financially well off, for those who live in big cities or are older from older generations and are more experienced and etc. However, there are a lot of examples which show us that uh, this is not uh, particularly the case there where the adequate support for young people exists. For example, I will mention our, uh, of course, our web 4 yes grant scheme, which specifically targeted local CSOs, which empowered had a goal to empower young people who wanted to start their own businesses and are mostly coming from uh, rural areas or belong to some vulnerable groups such as uh, young women or need population or some, some other. Uh, through the initiative, they receive uh, additional knowledge which is um, really um, important to them and include topics such as financial literacy, uh, business plans writing knowledge, and other soft or, or hard skills regarding entrepreneurship. There is a fear of failure and the general perception of 
being an entrepreneur in the region, in the Western Balkan countries. Uh, Bojana Jan uh, already brought up this the theme of digital economy innovations. So, so what about social innovations, creative industries, and digital economy, since these are also topics that you are closely dealing with? Okay, I will start regarding that, but I will make a little uh, throwback on Jan, Jan topic of social entrepreneurship because I mentioned it in, in the concept. Well, um, the idea is uh, social entrepreneurship, although Jan said it's pretty new for us, five or six years, very short period, because we're talking about entrepreneurial spirit 20 years and not doing anything, five years is, is a short period. The thing is, even that year, the period of five years, we overuse it and misuse it too much to uh, to have a, a bad notion when you start talking about the social entrepreneurship. Like, okay, here we go again, always same uh, uh, same um, paradigm. There is a social issue, um, and there is people that are disadvantaged that are working something on the field. Maybe we can put that together, have some economic activities, and something will came up. I think that uh, this situation today, it's uh, uh, now or never, I would not say never, but it's a good, uh, good momentum for uh, bringing up uh, those kind of initiatives. Because uh, we, will, uh, we will now see the economic consequences of, the, of, the, of, the, of this uh, global pandemic. And they will definitely um, make the, those social problems bigger. And in the same time, employability of the youngsters will be aggravated for sure. Uh, so let's put that together once again, because the, when we started last time talking about uh, social entrepreneurship or the first time in the, in the region, it was connected with the 28, 29 financial crisis. And uh, it brought up the, the notion that uh, in the Europe, social enterprises was the most flexible to survive the, the, the impact of the, so, of the economic crisis because they were got, gathered uh, around some social goal. They were ready to sacrifice uh, financially. Uh, they were ready to sacrifice some their time, their, their enthusiasm to go to the hardships of economic cri crisis. The same applies here. And I think the, the, the generation that are now uh, making the, the, the majority of the working force are the millennials and we are getting this uh, generation Z, which is uh, a similar uh, social awareness. So they like to do something and also seeking for the impact, seeking for the added value. And I think now it's good to um, good momentum. Even United uh, United Nations this uh, year youth report put the emphasis on the youth entrepreneurship as a uh, youth social entrepreneurship to be more precise as a mean to, to reach uh, 2030 uh, to reach 2030 uh, agenda of sustainable goals. Uh, because um, uh, there are community problems that are uh, that youngsters are um, concerned about, and they always see themselves as a as a possible actors of social change, but they do not believe in their own capacities and 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 strengths to engage in th those kind of situations. Maybe uh, this could be a, a a back door for them to start changing something in their own communities and and by by doing that gaining some entrepreneurial skills uh, trying the those trying that other side of social entrepreneurship so try to be on the market try to to follow economic rules uh, rules of the market and try to compete because um, this is the only way to to uh, fill that uh, triple bottom uh, approach that are now asked from the companies from the traditional sectors so uh, profit, environment, and social social goals, and the the, the possibility for the, for the traditional companies to succeed that is to make connection with social enterprises. So I think it's a good momentum to promote it, at least to promote it on the regional level as a concept, as a uh, pushing force for the youngsters to to try something out and to uh, to use all those youngsters that are ready to engage in the civil initiatives and uh, in I don't know volunteering and everything to promote the concept as one of the solutions 
And I think uh, the emerging solidarity that are, we are facing again in the region, solidarity inside the communities, uh, is the moment to, uh, to freeze that uh, value and try to build a, a better society, society around it. And uh, one of the ways how they can engage themselves into it in, the, in, the, in the field that are, they are best at it. So it's a dig digital economy, it is cre creative industry, and it is social innovation as pivotal concept of, the, of the every social uh, enterprise. Uh, so uh, this generation uh, acting now are uh, magnificent in, in, in digital skills, or presumably majority of them are, and they have the possibility to upgrade and to, 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 uh, to uh, faster than any other generation to fill the gap with the, with the people uh, of their age from the other more uh, developed countries. Uh, for that terms, I think that uh, we try to develop, I would now say about some examples that we do to, to develop programs in a form of uh, upbeat hub that we have in, inside of ZID uh, as, a, as, as, a, as a secure uh, environment for them for doing two things, to try to fail and to try again and that they don't have the that they have possibility to fail and to learn from the failure and to, to try again because there is no social consequences of the failure, there, no, uh, there is a secure environment to try. Um, we have three, uh, I would say, main programs dealing with those uh, uh, issues. One is the Upbeat Hub that is uh, focused on social innovation in, in connecting different social actors uh, from the communities. Uh, second one is I2 space or idea innovation space, which is focused on acceleration of the ideas uh, connected with social innovation and digital technologies, uh, trying to uh, encourage youngsters to uh, look uh, to the world market in the dig digital economies. And as Jan said, to encourage them that from their home, their, I don't know, home office or or the uh, using space or some hubs that are popping out everywhere in the region uh, to try to sell their skills or uh, to learn something new and then, then upgrade their skill and sell them better to develop partnership across region with people from the other part of the world. And it's a good opportunity for them to have the, uh, to have that, uh, that uh, momentum uh, which is possible, possible to use. And the third is the, the new emerge project, uh, which is called, uh, called Creative uh, CBC, which is focused on, on the creative industry, because the biggest capital of, uh, of every society is the, the, the creative resilience and possibility to use creative skills. It is using methodology of a living lab, or the, or the, which is a territorially oriented uh, uh, concept of using local resources not just from creative industry, which is maybe may, may said art, architecture, uh, I don't know, filming, and, and et cetera, but to use different actors to make joint pro project that re responds on social challenges, but it doesn't end on the, on the was creative, uh, uh, output, but goes to the to the markets because every research shows that 99% of the products never mind the industry that goes to the market has and must have a part of creative industry in brand. So it's a big, uh, uh, big uh, market, I would not say niche, it's a, it's a big, big market field that, that we can have competitive uh, uh, advantages for without uh, uh, helping as we used to in the, in the other industries in the past century. So that is uh, short or long, I'm not sure. A great explanation of social innovation as a key element of social entrepreneurship. And you also mentioned uh, that young people are afraid of failure. They, are, they need to be encouraged to, to uh, deal with social issues and as well social entrepreneurship. So let me uh, now uh, ask Darko. Uh, Darko, what do you think besides the role of the formal system in entrepreneurial education, what are the other possible ways to motivate young people to see entrepreneurship as an employment option for them? 
how to encourage them? Uh, yeah, so I mean, really, thank you for that question. And but I, I, I believe that I maybe touch the topic, you know, like kind of in a, in the first reaction uh, about about the environment, about you know, kind of what you will give them, in particular in a local community. Okay, so I'm. After several years of what, as as Jan was mentioning, you know, like kind of that we are talking about the same thing, yeah. But you know, like kind of from from the from from the 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 the, the system, from the state from the state level. If we are looking from our perspective, we grow, you know, like kind of from seventy schools to three hundred and fifty schools, right? And then created, you know, like kind of totally different different setup. But the thing is now that, that, you know, like a community itself needs to understand, you know, like kind of to support young people in their, in their, in putting their ideas into the action. And those young people are very well oriented right now with the 10 years, they do have higher level of, uh, of concern about the environment than, than all their previous generations together have, right? So they they have it. So, and we should give everything, you know, like kind of to make, to, to support their projections, their ideas, you know, like kind of on a very local, on a very, on a very local level. And then, you know, like kind of, we will build the need that, that should become, you know, like kind of the state policy, but you know, like kind of we, I mean, it's hard to implement it if the, you know, like kind of the, 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 the leader from the top says, as of tomorrow, we will all learn about the entrepreneurship, you know, like kind of, it just do doesn't go that way, you know, like kind of it, it, it needs, it needs to be flour flourish, you know, like kind of in a school, you know, like kind of, so they, the school should become the place where they like to go. You know, like kind of, even though they have digital skills, you know, like kind of, you have to create, you know, like kind of the, 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 the framework, which will give them the position, you know, like kind of to, 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 to do whatever they want, you know, like kind of I mean, in a, in a, in a sense of creating the business, thinking about the taxes and everything, you know, I, I mean, everything about the business in a, in a, in a high school, you know, like I know through the student company program, young person will go through the process like every business in their first or second, you know, like kind of year of, of starting the real business. So uh, it is, it, it, this is exactly what you want to give them, the experience that they will apply tomorrow, whatever they work, whatever they work, you know, like you have, you have, uh, generations or whatever people who have no idea how to read, you know, like kind of the, 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 the agreement from the bank about, about the, their credit or, I mean, their loan that they're getting, you know, like kind of because they don't think about it, they're, they're, you know, like kind of financially almost illiterate, right? And, and lear learning that process on, in a harder way, you know, like, and as soon as you give them the experience when they're, when they're younger, they will be stronger, you know, like in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the surroundings, whatever their idea is, you know, like kind of related to the social entrepreneurship or innovation in the IT, you know, like kind of, they can run 3 million, million dollar business, you know, like kind of, they should get up. You know, like kind of, they need to learn. You know, like kind of the communication, presentation, or you know, like kind of di di different kind kind of stuff, which will uh, or mathematics. You know, like, or they will pay somebody. You know, like or, or or understand who they need to pay to do the job for them. You know, so so everything that they experience over that period in the school will will be will be super experience for their for their professional life with with our projection to give them the strength to start their own business you know like kind of we, we never teach them you know like kind of that this is easy that the entrepreneur you know like is you open the business and then that's it we teach them that they will work 12 to 16 hours per day you know like kind of every day for 20 years 
-hmm. and more, you know, like kind of, and they will do more and they will, but, but we would, would like to teach them to understand that that is better for them, you know, like kind of, they will be able to calculate the balance, you know, like kind of when we said he has no idea what he's doing, you know, like kind of, yeah, yeah, but if he's an entrepreneur, he's, pro he probably, you know, like kind of knows or, you know, like kind of understand the risk, you know, like kind of earlier, you know, like kind of making different kind, different kind of decisions, you know, this is what from my, I mean, a personal perspective in our community, we are missing creating new generations, making decisions about their life in house, about their, their everything, you know, like kind of, and, and we kind of believe that somebody else will do the job, mm -hmm. some job, whatever it is, you know, like kind of, we are still considering about business ideas in a cafes over the coffee. And that's the place when we should put it, you know, like kind of in a two pager document, we will never going to do it, you know, like, and so, so I mean, just to, 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 to learn how to jump that, that, uh, that, that, that step. So, so it's, it's a changing a mindset in. Yeah. Changing a mindset, you know, like kind of, but not, not, I mean, changing a mindset when we talk about the entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial learning is not only about the kids. I mean, as I said, these kids, as Jan mentioned, after 2005, we don't have a problem with their entrepreneurial spirit, right? So that, that is totally, totally different, different reaction, you know, like kind of for what would they have. But the support on the level, you know, like kind of of the other part of, of their parents. I mean, parents are, you know, like kind of also somebody who should understand where is the importance for them. The parents are those who are, who are having serious um uh serious impact on a kid life right okay. so it's it's not it's not everything up to school and if teacher didn't you know like kind of build when it up up to five or seven you know like kind of in a in a in a uh, in the personal characteristics you know like kind of if they didn't build, you know, like uh, 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 creativity or, you know, like kind of self or, 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 or self-confidence, self you know, like kind of in that kid, which is part of the things that he needs to have as an, as a, as an entrepreneur, right? That, that is something that needs to be built. So it's up to you or up to system, you know, like kind of in, in, a, in a community to see, you know, like kind of what to, to recognize these potentials, right? If this kid is, you know, like kind of, okay, that's an interesting potential. The good thing about this kind of programs in that sense is that where you recognize that kids who are, you know, like kind of not interested in school at all, you know, but when you are talking to them, you might recognize some spark in their eyes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you give them the opportunity that they are, you know, a kind of serious people who are discussing their business idea and when then they start recognizing the purpose of it, you know, like kind of for what they are doing and every time doing learning the right way when they recognize the the program, the pro problem, whatever they have, they learn about it, you know, like kind of how to solve, how to solve that problem. And this is the, the process, you know, like for, for them. And when you see them, you know, to switch their minds, you know, that, that's one thing. But as I said, to everybody in, 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 a, in a community, you know, that should become, you know, recognizable term. In, I mean, we still have understanding that the entrepreneur, as I mean, as I, as I said, it should be somebody who is create, creating an added the value, you know, like kind of, but the entrepreneur in Serbia is, you know, I mean, considered is the one who is doing his own job, you know, so basically carpenter or, you know, like kind of shoe, shoe, mm -hmm. shoe master on, on, on the corner, you know, like, so th 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 this is, this is still the, 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 or tech cab driver, you know, like kind of, and, and, and that, that, and that, that kind of, of, uh, of, of jobs, right? So, so understanding on, of entrepreneurship should be changed in every, in every age, you know, like kind of the, the programs are for the kids are totally different, you know, like kind of for them, it's not changing, you know, like kind of, but it's building for everybody else is changing.
Yeah, so it's a full package, not only for young people, children, also for their parents and the entire community. So yeah, yeah. changing the mindset, building the mindset, whatever, but the whole package. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that is something that, I mean, on the one side, you should, you, you should talk to the politicians, you know, like kind of and say, what is the, the environment that you want to promote? What is the environment that you want to create? You know, like kind of in your community. And from our side, from the organizations who is dealing with particular education for it, you know, like kind of this is totally different side, right? So, so I am not working directly with the with the parents, right? So it's not it's not my part, you know, like kind of this is in on on a level I'm working mostly with the teachers and the school yeah. principals. Okay. So not not even with the kids. Uh, I think I lost you all for a second, even though I have great internet here. Do you yeah, hear I mean, Yeah, my, my, you, my picture for you is, yeah. Everything is okay now. I can see you and hear you. Please continue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but I almost lost myself, you know, like kind of, of, of this where, <laughs> where, where, yeah, where, I, where, I, where I stopped. Full package, teachers, your focus yeah. is on teachers. Teachers, we are and on, on the teachers, right? We are not meeting even kids, you know, like kind of, so so this is how we, we do meet them, you know, like kind of on the events that we are organizing, you know, but I'm not work, I'm not meeting 10,000 student, high school students annually, but rather 2,000, maybe up to 2,000 for them, you know, like kind of it, in the all, all the events all together. But the thing is, that yeah i mean really teachers schools as 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 a place and then everybody else is a community as a business volunteer who will go in the community and support these kids as a business it can be in a local community business angel it can be banker who will help them about the financial structure it can be designer who will you know like kind of help them to learn you know like or or, or do or do whatever of this stuff this is, you know, kind of how, how, how we see it. Yeah, and I also like that you said that uh, we learn them not only theoretical concepts, we learn them skills, practical skills, and they learn by doing. They, they are experiencing something in simulation that they will experience uh, later in reality. So let me let me uh, share with you my personal experience. Uh, I was I was a student of economics, and before that I finished uh, regular high school gymna gymnasia gymnasium. Uh, and uh, my first subject and my first class was entrepreneurship, and it was for me mind blowing that I saw that entrepreneurship is a science and it's a skill that can be taught, that it, that it has its structure, it has its steps. So uh, later I, I finished my bachelor and master thesis in entrepreneurship, but it was my first uh, touch with entrepreneurship at, at university. Uh, let me go back to Goran and ask him to uh, uh, we need to slowly wrap up the discussion to give us key recommendations of our um, report from web for yes initiative. Uh, Goran? Okay. Hi. Do you hear me again? Yes. We switched places again, uh, but it's still me, still the same person. So um, you, we all talked about uh, uh, um, creation of uh, business uh, incubators and creative industries. And uh, I think that, uh, that, that above everything else you all said, the, the, the entrepreneurial infrastructure, as we call it, uh, as that includes not only the basic infra infrastructure, like connection to the internet and mobile phones and everything else, it's also included in the uh, through uh, business incubators, co-working spaces, uh, maker spaces, and everything, all those kind of places that connect uh, entrepreneurs, business angels, uh, students, or uh, young people who 
who who who want and to 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 start their own uh, businesses. Uh, we noticed that uh, the, there is a scarcity of their availability across the whole Western Balkans. And uh, by that, I mean that it's not only um, that they're mostly concentrated in uh, big cities, uh, capitals and, uh, and the cities with uh, a, a population above um, 500,000 and more. Uh, but we do need to create and to and to and to distribute all of these all of this infrastructure across the whole region in the rural rural areas. Uh, we need to know uh, how many users are there, how many revenue do they make, how many uh, uh, ideas and the initiatives they create throughout uh, all of this. So um, uh, I'm sorry I didn't answer. All, uh, quite uh, your uh, question, but uh, this I just wanted to, to emphasize on this, on this, this topic again. Okay, Goran, thank you, of course. Uh, let me go back to Jan. Uh, maybe this is an obvious question, but I think it needs to be pointed out once again, uh, and you're the best person to answer this sense with this question. So what is the crucial importance of connecting young people from the region in terms of entrepreneurship and self-employability, who and how benefits from these kind of programs and initiatives? As you said, it, it's not, let's say, revolutionary idea or, or, or difficult answer. Uh, it goes, you know, in this quiz uh, on, on first level of questions which you usually can guess immediately. But uh, I mean, let, let, let's uh, be clear. Uh, it's a common issue. So it's not better situation in North Macedonia than in Serbia when we talk about generally entrepreneurship. We are coming, unfortunately, from the same socialistic uh, educational concept that didn't improve and changed a lot. So the bases are the same. We have governments as we have not too far away from uh, way how they create policies. Uh, and then the consequences are the same where you have high percentage of unemployment, bad link between education and labor market and the huge brain drain, just to take this one. Uh, and we have a common history that is very problematic in a way that uh, we had conflicts. We still have political conflicts so the relationship of, of new generation, which is post-conflict generation, when they born, let's say, in late 90s or beginning of 2000s, and they are now the youth cohort, uh, is still traumatized and still with prejudice, still nationalistic in a way. So to cope with the region, you need to have regional cooperation and the regional issues and problems are the same, more or less. Second, if you want to talk about business uh, and even in, during the wars and conflicts, the business was still running in the region. Uh, we, like it or not, cannot sell our services only to EU, United States. We are very interdependent so we need to teach, uh, let's say, young people about regional cooperation because their businesses are mostly or very, let's say, focused on the market. So to know the market, you need to have interaction of the new generation. So I would say that this goes, you know, we are on the same boat and you cannot jump out. Of course, the digitalization will help, let's say, uh, to increase the market but still your focus will be around. If you want to have, let's say, I was before this meeting talking to, to, to uh, some people about skiing in, 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 uh, in uh, Bosnia around Sarajevo, for example, still, if you go back, you will see that the most tourists are from Serbia, Croatia, etc. So, you know, you like it or not, having problem with your neighbors or not, this is your first market uh, in, in general. So I think this is this is also in relation to, to the answer. And then 
uh, I think what, what I experienced, and we had, for example, with ARCO, long uh, cooperation with ZID, I, I'm almost 20 years working with, uh, with uh, Dostignuća Mladih uh, for, since, I think, 2013, so it's, it's a lot. But what is the, the lessons learned is that I learned personally a lot from the regional cooperation. So I think when you have the same challenge as we have, and when you have other partners around the region, you can find solutions or increase your capacity through the regional cooperation. So I think this is something that is very valuable because you can learn, let's say, from Swedish model. You can learn from American model, but it's never applicable as you can learn from Serbia, from Kosovo, from Montenegro. And second, you can apply together because of this networking to some bigger projects as everyone here, including this conference, is part of a larger regional project paid by EU or whatever, whoever is the donor. So I think they, they, these are very nice uh, details uh, to explain why the, the, the regional cooperation is really uh, uh, a lot. And then there is the cultural thing, you know. I mean, when, when Bojina was talking about creative industries, uh, movie, festival, etc., are creative industries also. So if you want to do the creative industry, it is about culture, language, languages. Uh, and, and of course, your product of video, movie, etc., will be better, let's say, understood by the people from the same cultural circle than from, let's say, Fiji or, or, or Argentina, etc. Although, of course, that would be nice that they, they can also contribute uh, economically. So I think I already put at least 10 reasons, not crazy and new, but definitely good arguments why it, there is uh, a really need uh, both for exchange of practices, for joint applications, for learning to, from each other, for having joint businesses to learn about markets and to also uh, somehow um, be able to, to, to uh, develop further as a region because like it or not, we are neighbors, not by the fact, but also through the practices. And I think this, this can be very, I think if I will need maybe for the, big, for the last sentence to pick up what is the, the, the most useful, I think this regional inspiration also uh, can, can be very interesting when you go to exit festival and when you see the roots, how young people created one of the best and most valuable uh, creative industry project 20 few years ago as a very activistic initiative in, in Novi Sad or when you see Sarajevo Film Festival, how it was created uh, uh, during even the war in Sarajevo and now became the largest regional film festival. Or if you go now to, let's say yesterday, I was talking to one colleagues in Bosnia who would like to create business in Gorazde, in, in a very small area in the, in the east. I put which? I put example from Mokrin village, uh, Mokrin house in Serbia, Vojvodina, where they created the best, in my opinion, I didn't go and visit, but I was checking a lot, uh, digital nomad place. So digital nomad best place, in my opinion, at the moment, based on my information, is in a village in Serbia, in Mokrin. But I took it as an inspirational example to teach people uh, in Gorazde how you can maybe think out of the box. I didn't found that in Thailand, which is extremely good example of digital nomads, but I took it this because this is closer. This is, this is in the end, maybe inspiration next year for two, two, one, one couple to open new business in Gorazde, based on Mokrin, not about something else. So I think this is concrete and this is something uh, I would maybe finish with this saying, you can avoid region and regional dimension, but you will limit yourself. So more opportunities is region. Thank you, Jan, for this uh, perfectly structured answer, which is highly on point, and I would, wouldn't, I cannot add anything on this. Uh, uh, and this is also a great answer for wrapping up our very fruitful discussion today. Uh, thank you, dear panelists. Thank you, Darko, Jan, Božina and Goran for your expertise, for your experiences, for your views and opinions. 
uh, dear audience, also thank you and please join us on our next panel. Uh, if, if no one has anything else to add, I would conclude here. So good afternoon, everyone. So we, we have came to the last uh, panel of our today's conference. And in the last panel, we would like to discuss about the meaningful and effective impact of civil society organizations on policy development and decision-making process in the Western Balkans region when it comes to youth employability issues. Before giving the floor to my uh, lovely panelists, because I'm quite sure that they have much more interesting stuff to tell you than I, as a facilitator, can do so, I would just like to give you a kind of a broader framework. How did we come to this uh, topic and why actually advocacy and policy advocacy is so important when it comes to youth employability in the region? So the entire web for yes project was actually designed to address the insufficient involvement of civil society organization that deals with youth topics uh, in trying to affect the policy development and policy making patterns when tackling the youth employability issues. So in this regard for us as, as a consortium and for this project was very important to establish a kind of a meaningful communication channel between the civil society organization, youth and decision makers both on the country level and also on the level of the region. Uh, we did this through our structured dialogue. This dialogue was organized in every single country of the Western Balkans, as well on the level of the region as itself. And it provided us with the opportunity to have a kind of a unique forum where we could get all the relevant stakeholders, uh, both from the uh, government and non-government sector, both working on the same issues, improving the existing environment for youth employability. This kind of a structured dialogue led us uh, to uh, numerous inputs which we mainstreamed into the four, I would say, cohorts of policy documents. And each of these cohorts, we have come with a policy recommendation tackling different aspects of youth employability process. So we've done uh, policy recommendations of active labor market uh, measures for youth, on youth employability boosting, on entrepreneurial learning, and on creating an enabling environment for youth entrepreneurship. These cohorts of policy recommendation actually provided us with a sound ground to design and then implement 14 advocacy campaigns and 10 projects, all of them targeting very small portions of the aforementioned cohorts of youth employment policy. And now when we are facing the end of this exciting journey, we would like to discuss and talk with you and share our ideas on how to meaningfully advocate uh, for youth employability in the region. So this panel will actually not be the panel where we will represent the results of our uh, advocacy activities and our project. This will be actually the panel where our desire is to share uh, good samples, challenges, failures, but also successes that we have achieved uh, trying to push for a change in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the country level and the regional level when it comes to youth employment. And uh, when 
talking with my dear panelists on how to achieve this, we have come to the conclusion that we should do this actually throughout to the glance of two very important aspects of any advocacy campaign. One is working with the decision makers and the other is how to meaningfully involve the youth in uh, uh, advocacy campaign. So if you allow me, I will now pass the floor to my lovely panelists and I will ask each of them just to make a kind of a summary of the advices and challenges you have been facing uh, in the process of advocating and working with the decision makers. So very simply, in five minutes, what would be the key takeaways you would like to uh, bring out and send to our participants when it comes to working with decision makers uh, in the Western Balkan regions on advocating for improvement of youth uh, employability? I will just first give the floor to Silvia Dervishi. Silvia is a project coordinator from Beyond Barriers Association. Thanks to their advocacy campaign, we now have the situation where youth employment and entrepreneurship is integrated into the youth law of Albania. Uh, Beyond Barriers Association is working now on drafting the bylaws to the, together with the decision makers. And they also became a partner of a career guidance service, a big, I would say, coalition of 29 youth organizations which are now working in nine municipalities trying to establish a career guidance and counseling system on the local level. So, Sylvia, I can imagine that you have encountered a lot of communication and working with decision makers. So what are the advices that you could give to us and to our participants of the, in the conference? Please. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me first? Yes. Okay. Loud and clear. So, uh, I hope uh, everyone is uh, safe and sound. Uh, thank you for your introduction. So my name is Silvia. I work at Beyond Barriers Association as project coordinator, but I had the luck to be a project assistant for web 4 uh, project. And I will also take this opportunity to thank all the partners and especially Bosch for these uh, past three amazing years and for everything that we as a team have achieved through this initiative. So getting back to your question, I would like to say that this year have not been easy for anyone, but luckily at the end, we have come with uh, very great and desirable results. So we started the advocacy campaign last year, and of course there were challenges involved, but also lesson learned, and as well we have come to the end, as I already mentioned, with great results. So our advocacy campaign was linked to the law process, and the um, campaign goal was to support the drafting of the youth law in Albania, while advoc advocating for employability and entrepreneurship to be considered by the law. So I would say that was one of our challenges. So advocating for the youth law, it has been also a challenge, but also an example of success. I say a challenge because advocating for a law is never easy and the goodwill, motivation uh, and means are uh, not always enough, let's say, without proper expertise in the field. So from our experience, there is a lack of trust uh, between the CSOs and the public sector. And uh, there should be more collaboration and work if we want to achieve greater things. So we aim to have an inclusive advocacy of, uh, effort with a cross-sectorial approach. But nevertheless, it is uh, very challenging to build and maintain a long-term re relationship. So let's say it is not that easy, but it not, it's not that hard to put in the same table uh, the stakeholders, but then it's a bit difficult to maintain this relationship in the long term. Uh, influencing the policy process of making a law was our biggest aim of the advocacy, but, uh, but meanwhile, it was also a challenge um, in itself. And on the other law, on, on the sorry, on the other side, a law should come with a set of measures, but also public funding. And this was also also mentioned yesterday during the panels. And as we know, our government, especially in um, Albania after earthquake, but also this year uh, due, uh, due to COVID, uh, they have very restricted budget. And asking for a budget for a law, it's uh, in itself a challenge. But I'm really glad to say that through this um, advocacy campaign, we have learned our lessons. And I might say that um, when you have equal goals among policymakers and youth uh, uh, CSOs, uh, this should be a, a must for better policy uh, development. So in 2019, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport in Albania, starting to draft their um, uh, 
to draft the first law on youth in Albania. So beyond various in cooperation with the National Youth Congress uh, as our messenger and with in close the consultation with the National Fora, we made a concrete plan in order to push the ministries to regulate the articles of the law in order to have a real effect on young people uh, in Albania. So there was a few specific articles that would put in line, let's say, all, or that would uh, jeopardize the youth sector independence. Therefore, we ask that this law wouldn't pass without a previous consultation. And this was a success for us because the law was stopped, wasn't sent to parliament. And uh, we had to work in advocacy and lobbying again until the uh, law was passed uh, this um, uh, was passed in Parliament in November uh, for November 2019. I would also like to mention as a success um, Tirana Youth Capital, a specific action, but yet another important uh, step that became part of our work where uh, National um, Youth Congress with Tirana Municipality as associated partners, BBA and other partners achieved to win um, the title of Tirana Youth Capital. And uh, also BBA have played an expertised role um, in the team. And from this, we have learned that uh, when youth civil society sectors and uh, they um, collaborate, let's say, with the public government, they come together, uh, great things can be achieved. And uh, due to our advocacy campaign, there also another aspect that I would uh, like to mention is also an added value to our campaign is the local partnership that we have made with uh, Partners Albania for Change Development. Um, they are implementing a project about career guidance services, which consists of a bottom-up youth uh, movement, which, uh, which will advocate for the importance of the career uh, services, but on, in municipal level in Albania. Uh, this project includes 29 youth organizations, and the nine uh, municipality targeted, the nine uh, qualitations, and uh, career guidance is something that in Albania needs improvement. So we are very happy to work with them, not only because they have uh, uh, they are a huge organization uh, in Albania, but also because they have a really great impact in civil um, civil society uh, in Albania, civil society field. And uh, thanks to this advocacy campaign, um, I might say that we are very happy to continue to work in uh, this regard. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Silvia, for, for being very punctual. And just uh, to try to summarize what I really like, and I think that is, it needs to be mentioned once more, is uh, how to build, build a long-term relationship between civil society and public authorities. Because, you know, we are always facing this inherent lack of trust and we are stepping into these processes with some, you know, pre-thinking about the attitudes, about the values, what is behind, what's really there on the table. But building relationship is a halfway through if we are all on the common ground, if we agree over the, the common goals. And you also uh, mentioned this issue of inclusiveness, having all of the stakeholders being on board because this, this gives us a variety of solutions. And then the decision makers at the end of the day, uh, they feel much more comfortable when making a concrete decision when it comes to policy making patterns. And as you said, and I would underline the expertise which needs to be there if you want to be, you know, a, a counterpart which is reliable and a counterpart which can really take an active part in, in the decision making making process. So thank you. Thank you very much for this. Now I will move on now to uh, Mirela Kalamperovic. Mirela is a program coordinator from Association for Democratic Prosperity uh, ZID. Uh, Mirela, hi. So uh, I, I would like just to underline that te within this project, so ZID managed to enter the working group for the development of career guidance and counseling program in Montenegro, which is a big success because we now have the civil, so civil society organization being a part of a governmental body for drafting such an important program. You are also pushing for the enactment of the law of traineeship. And uh, we also created, thanks to the, the activities within your advocacy campaign, we also managed to create a larger network of career guidance and, and counseling providers on the local level. So you have, you know, worked on the several level, both on the local and on the central level. So what are the takeaways for our participants from working with decision makers on these issues? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Vladimir, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, well, as, as you mentioned, um, 
during this project and advocacy, we worked on several levels. And uh, what is really important uh, for us, um, it's uh, that uh, we should really collect all the uh, success stories and uh, also to learn from the challenges and, and the different lessons. But um, during this project, um, uh, we all uh, made uh, researches. Um, in the field of uh, youth entrepreneurship, uh, youth employability, active labor market measures, and of course, lifelong entrepreneurial learning. And what really makes us happy is that all these um, researches and analyses are very well accepted and used by different stakeholders. For example, National Employment Agency, Trade Union, uh, then um, Employers Federation, local employment offices and uh, they are discussed and they are presented in, in many different events and also they open the different discussions on local and national level and uh, it's very important for us to mention that they are used as a baseline for policy recommendations and creating uh, different grant schemes for startups that means that we really did a good job and we made a baseline for any future future changes uh, also, as a, as a result of uh, a local advocacy campaign, uh, it gave us an opportunity to cooperate and to meet with the representatives of, the, of local municipalities. Uh, and also there is a, a, such a visible impact on, uh, on need and on creation of uh, local action plans for youth employment. And this is also the beginning of our work, which we will, will continue to do in the future to meet more um, uh, representatives of local communities and local municipalities and really to put an effort on, on decentralization of active labor market measures what is very important uh, since we all know that there are different needs and challenges in different um, cities of montenegro and region of montenegro uh, what uh, this year was uh, very very uh, challenging for all of us um, because of uh, pandemia covid-19 and also elections and political changes in montenegro uh, but also it gave us a great opportunity that uh, uh, this week we could present uh, the law on traineeship to the representatives of uh, new government and the different stakeholders including national employment agency then uh, center for vocational training um, uh, then also representatives uh, of um, different ministries and university and uh, as one of the conclusion is that we really need to change the current law on professional training program of higher education gradu graduates and this uh, and that we should uh, advocate more for law and traineeship which is really need if we really want to prepare youth for a, a job market and to have more educated informed and trained youth uh, with better possibilities and opportunities to find uh, the first job. Uh, beside this, uh, ADPZ during all this period is recognized and one of the main actors in, in, in career guidance and counsel program. And as you mentioned, we were in a working group for development of the career guidance and counseling program, uh, which is led by um, you know, pub public and national institutions. And that really make us happy that um, during all this period, we could uh, organize different uh, activities and uh, training programs for youth and also to, to make uh, um, a big event and uh, to open discussion with uh, relevant uh, institutions in the field of career guidance and just to put uh, a focus on the importance of career guidance and counsel program for youth. Um, in order to make them more aware of their own responsibilities when it comes to uh, education, when it comes to formal, non-formal, informal learning, and also uh, for improving their uh, skills and knowledge for, for a better uh, position at the job market. Mm -hmm. uh, I would really uh, want to, to, to also to mention uh, that uh, through all the, our effort in, in these years uh, of the project uh, duration, we really want to put um, a focus on a trainership. And also we had um, um, a long video and uh, also audio uh, campaign um, targeting the public institutions, youth, but not only them, but also the, the employers, because we really want to have employers in our dialogue and um, to uh, just to make um, 
the dialogue more um, comprehensive and to make a great synergy uh, between all, uh, all, all stakeholders in, in this story because we should think from the beginning. Um, it's from the beginning uh, and we should include uh, uh, Ministry of Education, then the Ministry of uh, Labor, Economy and Finance because we all together should um, think about creation of different measures uh, for youth about the implementation and also about the evaluation. Um, so this year was was challenging, but at the end, I really would say that uh, we made a good steps and uh, also we made a, a great baseline for things that we should improve in the next period. Uh, and, and hopefully that we will really uh, achieve our results. Thank you. Thank you, Mirella. So if I, if I was to extract some of the key takeaways from your uh, presentation, I would just focus on, on the importance of bridging evidence research and, and impact on policy development. I think for the youth activists, youth civil society activists, this is very important. If you want to be taken serious, you have to step into the, this arena of policy dialogue being uh, aware that you should be credible, and what, there is no better way of being credible than knowing what you're saying and what you're actually proposing. And this kind of evidence-based, this practice that you have established of pushing for evidence-based dialogue, this is very important because then you are minimizing any kind of a populistic approach and just leveling the playground in a field that we discuss about the solutions which are based on the research and evidence, not on a mere populism or something that can uh, bring some instant political points or, I don't know, defend the interest of some narrow groups, which is very important. And what I really like, just to say this loudly, from your experience in decentralization and working on the local action plan of employability is using the civil society uh, resources on the local communities in, in targeting youth issues. Because who knows better the situations on local level, or on a community level than local CSOs. And now, and I would just, just connect this to your, the last point of your presentation, this is communication. So again, it's about communicating, and you just mentioned some of the, uh, of the instruments that you have u using. It's, you know, by communicating, we get the inclusiveness, we get stakeholders interested in, and on board, and we do, at the same time, awareness raising, because I think it is very important for, uh, for the civil society organization in this area to conquer the policy arena and to be heard not only by decision makers, but all those who can support them because uh, as you have explained, as we heard from the Celia's uh, presentation, uh, it needs time to work, decision, to, to work with the decision makers. The changes do not happen over the night. So the broader coalition you have, uh, the bigger chances that you succeed are there on, on, on the ground. So thank you very much. Now I will, I will uh, move on with Zerina Selimovic. So uh, Zerina is a project assistant at Economic Development Department in Institute for Youth Development known as CALT, so it's much easier to say CALT. So Zerina, you've been doing some fantastic thing on the, on, 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 on the local level. So th thanks to your advocacy campaign, you have managed to establish this model for support for development of businesses by young people on the local level. And you've been pushing very hard on the local municipalities in Bosnia and Herzegovina to establish a, a, an entrepreneurial fund as a part of the local budgets, and this entrepreneurial fund was designated for, uh, 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 with a specific yearly budget for entrepreneurial activities of the youth. So uh, what are your experience? So what, what would be the takeaways or the key advices you would give us in working with the decision makers on the local level? Hello, everyone. Uh, Vladimir, thank you for the introduction. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be here with all of you and to have opportunity to talk about this topic, especially because the advocacy for youth employment and entrepreneurship proved to be a successful tool for changing uh, the lives of the young people. Uh, from our point of view, as a first step, it was necessary to collect the data through the research which we conducted. Uh, the questionnaire was mailed to all 146 local self-government units in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and 70 of them filled out the questionnaire and sent them back. 
So I would like to share now with you five posters made by Institute and to explain the results we got. We also use these five posters um, for our uh, marketing campaign. Just to be sure that all of you see. Yeah, we see it. Okay. Uh, I will now uh, share with you results that we got. So 67% uh, of municipalities and cities that responded have programs for supporting entrepreneurship and self-employment. In uh, 65 of the participating municipalities and cities, one in two businesses continues running successfully even after the support ends. Around 90% uh, of cities and municipalities are interested in developing uh, entrepreneurship, but they needed additional donor funds. Uh, the survey also showed that third of the municipalities and cities that responded did not allocate funds uh, in the past two years, and 62% uh, percent of this third was not certain if they would be allocating funds for entrepreneurship and or self-employment in the near future. And also 57 percent uh, said they have documents regulating support to developing entrepreneurship and self-employment. Uh, 33 percent do, do not have any similar documents and 10 percent is currently working on developing uh, these documents. So the conclusion The conclusion uh, we got from the research are that local self uh, self uh, government uh, 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 local self government uh, units are becoming more interested in supporting uh, the, the development of entrepreneurship. Uh, however, this support is not comprehensive enough, and there is uh, plenty of room for improvement. Uh, of course, that support by civil society organization is welcome when it comes to fundraising. And lastly, we found that networking, sharing examples of good practice and experience are increasingly being practiced by local self-government unit, units, civil society organizations, and the business sector, which should be supported and encouraged. Just a second, uh, I'm sorry, I have some problems. So, uh, as a next step, uh, we have organized two event, events regarding the advocacy for uh, youth employment. Uh, we have the uh, opportunity to talk about challenges and to share some good practices. So I would li like to share the information we got with you because uh, through these uh, uh, through these two events, uh, we have a chance to talk um, with the municipalities that we worked before and that we didn't work before. So some of the challenges that partic participants pointed out include that uh, too much of the budget in municipalities is spent on salaries, which leaves very little funding for entrepreneurship. Uh, some of them also said that municipalities do not have a person only in charge supporting the development of entrepreneurship. So defining this position uh, and allocating appropriate uh, funding would be very beneficial for entrepreneurship. Uh, next, the paperwork re required was one of the problems they uh, faced with uh, issuing public calls. Uh, for awarding funds where people without higher education um, choose not to apply, uh, although they are interested because they think they won't be able to meet all reporting demands. Uh, and lastly, negative perception of the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina results in young people's lack of interest in entrepreneurship and self-employment. So it's really important to find ways to reach young people and encourage them to apply to receive funds for their business ideas. 
to give them unnecessary support. And this is what Institute has been continuously do doing through this project and through uh, some other projects. And I would like to finish with the information that we uh, successfully implemented a model for supporting youth startups in eight local self-government units in Bosnia and Herzegovina, helping with the funding of more than 40 youth. Actually, I think that the, the takeaways that you have here are more or less similar to the ones that the previous panelists had. So the importance of research, the importance of inclusiveness, being persistent. I will get back in the second round to you with this engaging of youth, because here, as, as, as understood from your presentation, you need the additional effort to also get youth to be motivated to exploit these kind of uh, opportunities. But this is for the second round. And I think th the persistency is something that also should be mentioned here, because it's not always easy. Uh, you, we, we see a rather negative results from your research. And also we had in Sylvia's case, we had a situation where actually BBA had to stop the law because it was going in one direction. So you need to be persistent actually if you want to achieve because this, and you know, there is no uh, short term result when you try to po change policies. So it needs persistency and uh, involvement and dedication in the long term. Thank you very much, Zerina. So we move on now, and I would just like to, to pass the floor to uh, Val, Valmir Cemaili, who is project coordinator from LANS from Kosovo. So, uh, Val, Valmir, hello. So you've been doing a, a really challenging job of being a broker in trying to coordinate establishment of the system for uh, career, career orientation services in Kosovo. So that means more or less working with all the levels of governance in Kosovo. So, you know, lessons learned, challenges, if there are there some tips that our participants can use when trying to engage different levels of authorities in the process. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, dear everyone, uh, I am very happy to meet you all. Uh, and dear Vladimir, he, uh, I, I like the way how you address the questions because it, it opens up uh, the conversation for me because it was exactly how you mentioned this challenge of bringing together all the uh, all the uh, bodies who were responsible for, for career orientation services. And uh, immediately after we went uh, on, on the topic, we, we understood the, the, the difficulties and the challenge that it was. Uh, and I have to mention also that uh, we had a, a great moment when it was a change of government here in Kosovo, when they decided to terminate some of the ministries. And uh, Lens were hoping uh, that uh, on that particular time we will have something which is concrete and, uh, and de decided which ministry is going to have this responsibility of uh, career uh, orientation services. However, immediately this change uh, went back to, to, to the, the previous reality which we had, and then we continued uh, in, the, in, the, in the old way. Mm. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will just uh, start this conversation with a pers perspective from our organization, which for some time now deal with uh, social innovation and employment uh, policies. For our luck, uh, it was easy until the uh, moment of collaboration because Lens has previously met with representatives of, uh, from ministries, uh, which was uh, uh, an advantage for us because we, we, we knew what they are doing. We, we, we met also in, in uh, uh, national forums many times and we discussed about uh, this issue. But when it came to uh, uh, creating something uh, which is uh, joint efforts from, from all the ministries, we, uh, we realized that even if we uh, establish to create these career orientation uh, services, the problem will remain still the same. And why, why it is so? Uh, the problem st uh, still remains the same because uh, there is no systemic approach towards the uh, linkage between uh, labor market and the education system. Mm -hmm. So even though we managed to, to, to help the, the ministry clarify the role of uh, career orientation services, still the, the information that this uh, services uh, provided for youth was, uh, was not enough. And uh, we, we, we seen that this, uh, we learned from this process that this challenge is still noticeable to all young people 
and not only to, to people who are uh, coming from the marginalized groups, but to all young people in, in, in Kosovo. Mm. And uh, we have noticed this also by including uh, youth in our, our uh, uh, activities uh, when we were helping them to, to guide uh, through, through the future development. And we noticed that the lack that they have in, in the education system, uh, the lack of information that they have in, in the education system is not noticeable. So, uh, knowing uh, that I need to conclude somehow, I, I will, I will uh, tell that uh, we, our uh, advocacy plan was clear. We wanted to uh, improve the career orientation services uh, for youth in all Kosovo, which means that we, we went uh, through a collaboration of all the ministries who were responsible to provide these services. So uh, I would say again, despite the, the fact that LANS have achieved to further expand the co cooperation of two ministries, which are uh, mostly uh, responsible for, for career orientation services, which is Ministry of Education and Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare, uh, it still needs to be a national strategy which uh, foresees that these youth challenges coming from the education system to the labor market and this gap on information, this gap that is uh, always being there, uh, ministries can open and establish as many as career orientation services as they want, but youth will not be able to, to get the, 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 uh, the information which is needed for them. Mm. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I think here, here are the key tech, you know, takeaway is about pushing for systemic solutions, especially when it comes to such important issue as, as career said, orientation. It, it has to be and, a systemic uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and I really like this, this, this sample that you brought there. Actually, sometimes the civil society has uh, to show up as a broker, not only between the civil society and the public authorities, but also between the public authorities themselves. So, exactly. and actually this, this is what makes process very challenging, but I think it, it is very exciting to try to push for this kind of a changes. And I think in our region, especially when it comes to youth organization, if you have the expertise, then we should not be shy. We should be bold enough to try to do some things. Why not brokering between two ministries and trying to, you know, establish a system you, why, why, why cannot the civil society organizations come and say, okay, this is how the system should look like? Okay, this, the, the country, the public authorities are failing to do so. Let us give you the, 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 our perspective how this should be done. So thank you very much. So I will also be very curious about this, you know, youth engagement in establishing this system, but this is for the second round. Thank you very yeah, much, Wagner. So we move now to Philip Kulakov. So uh, Philip is an international affairs and policy coordinator at National Youth Council of North Macedonia. So, uh, Philip, uh, within your uh, advocacy, you were also uh, targeting the law. In this, in this case, it was the law on the trade companies where you wanted to reduce the minimum capital of 5,000 euros for starting a, a business if you are a, a young person. And I would say, from my experience as an advocate, you were tackling a very sensitive issues because public authorities don't like when you're messing with their uh, practices when it comes to budgets and budget allocations. So what were your, you know, what would you advise us how to, to, to tackle these sensitive issues when it comes to, to youth and, and these kind of topics which imply budgetary changes? Okay, uh, thank you Vladimir for the introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to use this opportunity to thank and congratulate all the partners that were working together on this project the last uh, two years. Congratulations on all our successes, and of course, congrats on all the results that you have achieved with the National Advocacy Campaign. Uh, now, moving on to our National Advocacy Campaign, uh, we were focusing on stimulating youth entrepreneurship in North Macedonia, and how we wanted to achieve this was by making an intervention in the law and trade companies in our country, specifically Article 172, that uh, says that the minimum requirement uh, of capital to start uh, limited, liability, limited liability company was 5,000 euros. And knowing the context of youth in our countries, not just here in North Macedonia, but uh, the entire Western Balkans, I think we're more than aware that young people that do not necessarily have this uh, sort of capital and are, and this uh, legal requirement basically demotivates them from uh, trying to start a company and follow an idea that they might have so I think uh, uh, this, this sort of uh, cooperations we have in the Western Balkans can also help us learn 
from one another. And we have also followed Serbia's example, where the minimum capital uh, requirement is one euro. And we did a sort of an analysis that uh, analyzed the legislation of our neighboring countries and the and countries in the region. And we have come to the conclusion that this was not only uh, present in Serbia, but also in Croatia and Bulgaria. So following uh, their example, before we wanted to develop policy recommendations, much like all the representatives uh, in the youth sector, I would say that nothing, uh, no youth policies should be developed without the consultation of young people themselves. We did uh, uh, sort of like a wide uh, online survey questioning uh, different young people about uh, what uh, are their perceptions about youth entrepreneurship. And uh, also together with our network of uh, member organizations, we did uh, focus groups in all statistical regions of the countries to uh, receive an objective feedback from young people all over the country about what they, uh, what are their perceptions about uh, youth entrepreneurship, uh, what motivates them to uh, start a business and what demotivates them. Of course, the results confirmed our initial idea that uh, definitely the capital requirement was a factor. And this was something that uh, we began um, uh, to use as a basis of our advocacy campaign. And it's uh, really funny how when we were starting the development of these advocacy campaigns, we were not expe expecting that we would be met with the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, also much like Ivan mentioned yesterday, this project uh, throughout the implementation, there were a lot of elections taking place uh, during these years. And this year was no exception. Here in North Macedonia, we had the parliamentary elections and um, a part of our advocacy campaign was having meetings with uh, members of parliament, specifically the club for youth affairs and policies. However, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic postponed the elections and we have to sort of adapt our strategy. And I think this was like a nice learning uh, experience, how quickly we can adapt uh, our strategies towards our goals. So instead of uh, advocating with the members of parliament, we decided as the National Youth Council to get our representatives of the youth wings of all the political parties. We held uh, different meetings where we would uh, introduce policy recommendations that they can use in their pre-electoral campaigns. And uh, this was very uh, fruitful because we, all, we almost had meetings with all the political party representatives. And I think uh, this sort of approach, approach allowed us to put uh, youth higher on the agendas of uh, decision makers. And uh, since uh, uh, youth entrepreneur, entrepreneurship also kind of helps towards uh, employability for youth, I think uh, this was also like a nice way uh, to uh, work on the negative impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic of youth in this region in general. Mm -hmm. So, um, after we have organized these meetings, uh, we received positive feedbacks from uh, many of the political party representatives. And uh, now moving on to the results, I am very happy to say that in the, pro uh, in the program of the new government, uh, we have uh, seen that they have included um, in their program for uh, entrepreneurship uh, that they will be uh, introducing a new type of a trade company that uh, can be founded with just one euro. It hasn't been implemented yet, but we'll be definitely following the process closely and collaborating with our decision makers to make sure that this is um, uh, inclusive for you and they will be able to use uh, the opportunity to start their own businesses. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Philip. So I, I will not mention, and thank you again by sending us a very clear messages from the perspective of a concrete campaign, how, how this could be done uh, in, in an effective way. I will not mention the, the, the same stuff that was mentioned in the, by the previous panelists, but I will just under this adaptation and how nicely you have moved when you encountered this, uh, the challenge ahead of you, how nicely you created the mitigation strategy and try, started to work with the youth members of political parties and as, you know, secured yourself another entrance into this political arena, which is fantastic. And, you know, we can, you know, having this as a program, uh, as a part of a government program, that's almost like having it in, in a law. So, you know, congratulations on this. And I think I would be very interesting when we do the second round to hear from you, how did you manage to have such a wide uh, 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 participation of youth in this area because you said you worked in almost all municipalities. This is a quite, 
quite uh, quite a task, I would say. So having the youth on board, this is some, would be something to, to also share with us. How how do you do this? So the last last but not the least, so it's Jelena Manicher Deutschich. So Jelena is improvement of employability external advisor to Bosch. Jelena is uh, is good to have you here. So uh, now it's uh, because I'm also part of Bosch now. It's a little bit a big use role for me. So Bosch has been working uh, mostly on introducing the plan for implementation of career guidance and counseling standards. So we have done quite a lot of to put the quality framework for traineeship high on the agenda. Perhaps even legislate it if possible. And I think as as a kind of a common denominator, we, Bosch has put a lot of efforts to push for the CSOs to be actually recognized as a counterparts when it comes to policy developments in these two areas. So, uh, Jelena, from working three years on this in, in, in Serbia's environment, so what would, what would be a kind of a tips that you would give to, to our participants? How to, how to achieve these kind of a changes that you have succeeded with your team? Yeah, first of all, thank you, Vlado, for this nice introduction. And also thank you for um, being our mentor uh, in, in this process of developing and implementing advocacy campaigns. And um, I, I, I think it's so appropriate that you moderate this session and also give us these tips as a, as a, as a summaries. And um, I'm very happy personally and professionally to be here with you today and, and, and to see and to witness so much success from advocacy campaigns um, all around the region. And um, I've been very, very intensively involved in first two years in the, of the project as a project coordinator. And, and now I'm also following this um, as an advisor. And uh, I must say that um, it, in some points, it also already exceeded our expectations and, and um, I think that um, we are we are leaving uh, we are leaving a Balkan as a as a as a much better place for young people than than it was once we started the project. So um, I have a very very nice and also very challenging task to summarize three years of activities in the field of advocacy. Um, and as you mentioned, and Vlado mentioned in his introduction, um, um, Belgrade Open School decided to focus on these two areas, on, um, on improving the quality of career guidance and counseling system, as well as on improving the quality of um, internship and traineeships for young people in their regulatory framework. So um, as, as my colleagues mentioned, we did, um, we did a research, we, we scanned the situation all around the Western Balkans, and we um, uh, found out that there are some common challenges um, that young people are facing, like not having a proper access to quality career services that would help them acquire career management skills and adapt easily to, to, to the overarching changes in, in the labor market environment. I mean, uh, even these days with pandemic and how, how commerce sector will shift, uh, it's, more, it's more clear than ever that um, we, cannot, um, we cannot actually um, work in the area of youth employability without having young people empowered with, with right skills to manage their transitions and to, and to really learn how to swim in, in, this, um, in this environment. And I'm so happy to hear that uh, in, um, in other, in other um, uh, partner, partner um, areas of activities, career guidance uh, initiatives received so much success. And then the coordination and cooperation among actors in this field was also something that we found out as, as something that could be approved. Um, and, and then there's this um, quality traineeships undertaken by young people and how, how to ensure this quality. And um, um, I'm, I'm now thinking whether to address first what we did or what we succeed or what we didn't succeed. So I'm just going to um, try to briefly summarize. Um, um, this is a, a career guidance and counseling is not a new topic for Belgrade Open School. We've been working for over a decade in that field. And uh, what is our approach was to always uh, be a constructive partner to, to the decision makers and to understand, uh, to understand the broader context and what are the challenges in the education system, in employment system and in, in, in system uh, that um, policy policy framework for youth uh, as a uh, career guidance is at, in, at the intersection of these areas. And uh, so constructive means to, as, as you, Vlado, pointed out, to, to build ourselves as credible partners in dialogue, as um, building our, uh, our conclusions and our recommendations on the evidence, on research, um, uh, evidence. Sometimes it was very easy to, to find the data, but these, are, these were um, may, maybe rare opportunities. Sometimes we had to do our own research, as my colleague mentioned, uh, with, with the sources from donors um, that, that we ma managed to provide. And sometimes we might even manage to influence the, the public institutions that are conducting research to, to also uh, ask questions that could help us then 
uh, follow, monitor the progress and implementation of certain policy or to monitor young people's expectations and, or their access to career services or the quality of services or, um, or, or, the, or whether their, their traineeships are being uh, of a good quality, having a mentor and contract and being paid or remunerated in any way for the efforts put in. So just to name a few of those data. So, um, so first step would be building yourself as a credible partner and always uh, talking with arguments, with facts and, and always um, um, covering every, every recommendation that, that you have with, with data and, and with examples from other countries. As, as Philip pointed out, he did notice how it is in Serbia. We were also looking with, with, um, with it at EU level and what kind of quality frameworks are there for career guidance and for traineeships and trying to follow up this uh, EU wide initiatives, not only in EU, but also in other countries out, there, out, there, out, of, the, out of the EU, um, and, and to kind of a try to make recommendations based, based on that. And the second thing, uh, besides this evidence-based um, argumentation or recommendation, would be consultation and really identifying the key stakeholders and approaching them with proposals. Uh, we used uh, the National Forum for Youth uh, Employment and Employability um, as a mechanism that was built uh, during this project as, an, as a dialogue platform where we um, always um, discussed our evidence finding, are they right, is there anything else that we are missing that decision makers or representatives of institutions in the field of education, business, employment, youth, uh, other uh, colleagues from civil society organizations and other associations um, maybe maybe to add and, and to always double check whether whether we are on the right track and whether our proposals and recommendations makes make sense. Um, well, with this credibility, we managed to be recognized and to be included in the National Council for um, National Qualification Framework. And uh, through that mechanism, we suggested, uh, uh, we proposed this plan for implementation of career guidance and counseling standards that were previously developed developed by, by the government institutions and where, where we also participated and gave our expert contribution. But we, we, we had a feeling that uh, implementation of these standards should be uh, more um, structured and intensified so that young people can feel the benefit at the end. So we were, we were persuasive and this plan was adopted and, and this year uh, we've been following up uh, and monitoring the implementation and, and then we will drive the conclusions what should be improved in the system based on that. And when it comes to quality traineeships, um, we managed to develop, of course, after research and after so extensive consultations with different stakeholders in trade unions, employers, civil society, is young people themselves, but I'll talk more about it later, as you mentioned. Then we managed to develop two alternative proposals of the of the article of the of the labor law, um, um, offering two alternative um, re legal frameworks on how to how to actually structure this uh, contractual contracts with trainees, especially traineeships at the open open labor market out of the education system, where young people uh, were mostly unprotected. With so many of them, like seventy percent, more than seventy percent of them, not being able to have a proper contract and mm -hmm. and to um, have some minimum of, of rights guaranteed. So um, we managed to communicate these alternatives. Uh, we, we met so much challenges um, on that way. I would just name one, uh, which was more very important, just keeping this, keeping the issues that we as um, civil society organization working with you, uh, keeping these issues that we feel that are important to young people, uh, keeping them on the agenda of decision makers. Uh, when um, situation in Western Balkan is so, um, overwhelmed with many challenges in economic transition and uh, EU integration and then advocating for something that we feel that it's important and um, maybe sometimes in competition with other priorities. It, it was really challenging and also this generation gap that we uh, identified, especially when it comes to traineeships, like it was difficult for us to mm -hmm. always um, find proper words to explain the importance of traineeships and internships and gaining some work experience as um, this was not so relevant um, maybe uh, two decades ago, um, when our decision, when some some uh, decision uh, representatives of decision-making institutions were entering labor market, but the um, reality changes, and uh, it's um, it was uh, it was interesting um, to to communicate these changes and to and to um, um, point out the importance of having proper legal framework. We are still on this. Uh, we are still trying to to find a proper solutions. We achieved so much. We have the attention of of the authorities and the dialogue going on. And uh, we certainly hope uh, for, for, the, for the more concrete results in that area in the next year.
Yeah, so I'll stop you. here. I'm sorry if yeah, I have no, no, time that's, or that's not. Perfect. So actually, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you summarize, so I'll just make it in a word. So it's about credibility. It's about credibility, which is based on knowledge. Uh, but it's also about the skills, how to, you know, maintain Lato, dialogue. Get back? Yeah, I hear you. I mean, Please. I can go on, no problem. Um, whoever met me knows that I can I can talk uh, for ages. So <laughs> just, just let me know that I have a green light and I'll continue to do so. But uh, in the meantime, I'll just wait if Vlado will, will okay. come back yeah. and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll continue come back as in the he second did to round summarize. To this. Yeah, I'll come or, back or am I the only one not seeing him, right? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I'll come back to this in the second round because it is very important, but I like this as a, I would just repeat myself. So the persistency, credibility, which is based on the knowledge and, and the skills, maintaining the relationship, understanding the gaps. I really like this okay. notion of intergeneration gap between the decision makers and the civil society organization, which are advocating for certain issues like... like well, you know, maybe just uh, while we wait for Vlados to show up, um, maybe I can just briefly add that... Uh, uh, it was uh, it was um, extremely important to um, to uh, yeah somehow engage young people and to um, and to we were we we're trying to be very creative in that. So I know that that would be Vlado's next question. So um, yeah, I I'll, might even start answering Yelena, it now. You now? Um, do you hear as, me, as, Yelena, as we cannot see him, uh, just to share an insight on two. Um, when it comes to um, good quality trainerships, uh, we were very very uh, in let's say, um, resourceful in trying to find ways to, to reach young people. And uh, for, for a couple of years in a row, we have organized this um, um, internship days. We saw that our colleagues from European Union countries have these actions and they mark uh, in, uh, and sometimes in November um, and December, they mark this internship day and they organize a, um, a lot of activities. So uh, in Serbia, we organized um, um, some street performances. We organize actions of um, young people passing Burek around with the slogan, Ne Burek Praxe. <laughs> and then um, last year, we used this unicorn hashtag. Are there unicorn traineeships? Is it, is it really a unicorn or uh, some, something that is uh, not so achievable? Or, or we can actually achieve having yeah. good, can good quality traineeships? Can I stop you here? Oh, yeah, please yeah. <laughs> do because so. Like, now I can me. hear you. Yeah, yeah, for a moment. I think for a moment you and I were talking in parallel, but I like because we are talking almost the same stuff, which is fantastic. So I really like this, and you just gave me the perfect floor to now bounce back to the second round. And, you know, uh, when I started under, trying to decode the policy development patterns in the region, I always had in my mind that the policy development in every era, especially in youth, is about those who demand the change. So here in our case, civil society, those who make decisions about the change, it's about decision makers, but also it's up to those on whom the changes will be affecting. And this is the youth. And this is why just we decided to finalize uh, this, this panel with your tips on how to engage youth. Yelena, thank you, thank you very much for this. And one of the less desirable stuff that you have to do in this kind of panels is you have to facilitate. So we have some like 15 minutes. So I'll just now throw back the ball to Sylvia. Sylvia, just in, a, in a one or two minutes, the key takeaways, how to engage youth from your experience. Okay, thank you. So uh, since we don't have uh much time, I will uh, try to be briefly, and I'm very happy that you uh, brought this question up. So regarding the um, uh, engaging uh, young people, I might say that young people are the core, but also the foundation in the young bar barriers organization, since we are a youth NGO. Therefore, they have been engaged um, uh, through different stages of the project, so from the beginning to the end, uh, till the end through the different uh, direct activities, through national fora, youngsters was treated as equals with uh, other stakeholders and policymakers. Mm -hmm. As a positive side here, I can mention the um, commitment of both sides during the whole implementation of the project, where youngsters have been not only actors, but also factors of change as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the best practices uh, that I would like to highlight is also our uh, collaboration with National Youth Congress, which is an um, umbrella organization of more than 100 uh, CSO in Albania. So uh, there, as our messenger, have the um, helped uh, have helped us to. Um, 
to facilitate, but also consult young people in the whole uh, lawmaking process. So definitely I can say having such a structure as National Youth Congress represents the voice of youth, but also work with us is an added value. Um, if I might say about the challenges, uh, nevertheless, all young people trust the transparency of uh, public policy making. Yeah. So this thing kind of become a change, uh, a challenge to keep them um, on board, but also kind of to make them feel uh, the ownership of the whole thing. So. Um, there goes an um, advice, let's say that we should help uh, young people to critically reflect upon their values, to develop their identities to co and to contribute to uh, their communities. And as Elena mentioned before, we should always keep youngsters in the agenda. So as a lesson there is not something new, but uh, still it's valid. Uh, I might say that young people need more trust, need to be treated as equals. And uh, one of the most important things is that they have to be treated with respect. So in our organization, we have a very good saying that is for youth, uh, by youth and with youth. And I would like to see this approach more. And um, we should train uh, young people to be empowered in the decision making and policy implementation process. And I would like to conclude with one uh, of my favoring sayings by Benjamin uh, Disrael, who says that uh, almost everything great that has been done has been done by youth. So youth has the power, uh, they have um, ideas, uh, uh, what we have to do, we just have to, uh, to support them. Thank you, thank you, this, this was very inspiring. Thank you, Silvia. So Mirella, from your side, key messages, how to include youth? Uh, well, um, as Silvia said, and probably all partners will say that youth are in, in the focus of our work and our programs and different projects. For us, it's very important uh, uh, to include them in our activities and also to be aware of um, challenges that they're facing with and also um, having in mind that uh, youth in Montenegro needs uh, uh, one to two and a half years uh, uh, in the transition process from educational system to the job market and the first job, it, it is uh, very important to know that we really should create different kind of activities and programs and um, uh, training programs and uh, to, to prepare them for the job market, to prepare them for different uh, obstacles and challenges they're facing, facing with. And uh, also uh, uh, as, uh, having in mind all these um, informations and uh, different kind of research that have been conducted uh, in the past years, uh, we tried to, to organize different programs and uh, different activities for them uh, and inform them about uh, the importance of career guidance, career counseling, also uh, to open space for them to talk, to discuss and to hear them, um, to talk about their challenges and their needs. Also, uh, what we are really proud of is the events that we organize in these uh, periods, uh, dialogue with employers, uh, for us, it was very important to have in one place employers and youth and actually to, to uh, give them opportunity to ask and to have responses on uh, how to prepare for the job market, uh, how to work uh, on their skills and knowledge and to be accepted by, by the employers. Uh, this really showed uh, showed uh, showed uh, as a very uh, very important as a very great opportunity that we gave to youth, and also in the same time to the to the employers, uh, uh, because sometimes they don't have uh, such opportunity, uh, especially when we are talking about the law on professional training that I mentioned in the in the first uh, session. Uh, there is no choice for you, to, neither for employers to choose profile of candidates and profile of employers and this kind of events and uh, this kind of dialogues between youth and employers and the different stakeholders uh, who are in charge uh, of education, uh, employment, really gives them opportunity 
to be more informed about what to do and how to have to gain mm -hmm. skills and also how to gain social social emotional skills mm -hmm. that they really need uh, in their life uh, in um, overcoming different challenges they're facing facing it Thank you, thank you, Mirella. So this was very succinct and, 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 and punctual. So Zerina, from your side, what takeaways for engaging the youth from the experiences of working on your advocacy campaign? Um, to start, I want to tell you first about uh, one of the young entrepreneurs that found her inspiration to start a business after attending several events similar to this conference. And I would like to use the opportunity to point out the importance to organize events like this. Uh, uh, we were involving uh, um, youth through, um, through, through different actions. Uh, also, we organize a lot of um, a lot of different kind of events, conferences where we could um, connect young people with uh, the representatives of um, of municipalities, and also to connect with uh, youth with. Um, uh, other entrepreneurs. Uh, as a general rule that we have learned the main obstacle that young people face it a very first step in starting a business, uh, namely most of young entrepreneurs says that the registration process takes too long. Moreover, as other challenges, they see the lack of knowledge about entrepreneurship and legal procedures. Uh, luckily, with the help of Institute for Youth Development Cult and their municipalities, they managed to overcome these issues uh, and now they are successfully run their own business. Um, additionally, one main hurdle is this, that discourage young uh, people from even trying their own business is the negative perception of entrepreneurship uh, and um, the lives of those who stay in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So in that light, we need to dedicate more attention to positive and examples and stories uh, as it could um, um, also serve as a motivation to other young people, um, yeah, other young people who want uh, to beca became an uh, entrepreneur. Uh, young people definitely need moral support, someone to tell them that they are capable, worthy, and that they will succeed. Uh, so it would be helpful to focus on stories of successful people and to ensure the formal education uh, integrates uh, entership into curricula. This way, it would be easier to recognize young people's interest in having their own business. Uh, also, uh, I think that um, local communities ha uh, has to work uh, on networking of young entrepreneurs and other business owners as well. Um, also, local communities has to support uh, youth, not just financially, but also by offering them uh, training sessions on entrepreneurship and also um, uh, offering them help with all that paperwork that uh, they will uh, exceed to complete. Uh, so I really hope that this conference will motivate young people and for those who still have a fear that uh, it will set them in the right direction. Yeah, thank you, Zerina, very much. So I really like the, the, your approach. So it, you, there are two levels. It's one level is of enabling environment, technical support, knowledge, skill, but the other level is bo boosting confidence and actually supporting the, the young people in local communities that actually they can do it. It's not about only having money, having the environment legislation, but also having a trust, trust and a belief in the young population that they can change the landscape of the local communities, which is very important. Thank you. Valmir, from your side, what would be the, the takeaways? Considering the time here, I will try only to conclude. I hope that I, I will conclude in only one sentence. And uh, I would say that uh, if you want to advocate for you, the, mo the most important actor uh, to be part of the, of the collaboration and the advocacy is youth, youth itself. And why so? 
uh, it is just because uh, bottom up approach it, it is always uh, more, more, more stable. Uh, in our programs, uh, or I, I can say it like this, Lens was uh, lucky to have all, uh, many youth around us because of our old programs that we have related to youth uh, skills and capacities. But I, I would not consider this as a success story because I believe that youth should also have the opportunity to uh, exp or to, to, to prove these skills also in the education system before they come and join a non-formal uh, education system or in the labor market. So uh, I would still conclude and go directly to, to the same thing that I said also before. Mm -hmm. We need to do something uh, in the education system before you join us in the labor market and, and in the non-formal education Thank system. Thank you. Thank you, Valdez. So, uh, Philip, it turns out that you are closing this panel. So, please, <laughs> the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Vladimir. Uh, I promise to be really brief. Uh, just like I mentioned before, um, if we want successful youth policies, we need to uh, treat the young people with respect. Um, if we want a successful advocacy for youth, uh, we need to recognize young people as a specific age, age group that, that needs to be approached differently than the rest. And I think uh, there is a misconception in our Western Balkan countries that young people need help. No, young people don't need help. Young people need support. Young people need to be given a space for expression and young people need to be treated with respect. When it comes to youth policies, they need to be able to set the agenda on equal basis with the stakeholders if we want them to be successful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Philip, thank you very much. And, and I really like to thank you for being absolutely punctual. So it's three o'clock. Now, I, I really don't have, I was preparing some closing remarks, but, but you actually did, done a perfect job. I don't have nothing to add to what you have said. Just to express my gratitude for giving me the opportunity as a part of the team to, to be with you in this journey in the past three years. And I'm quite sure that having this kind of organization as a kind of interlocutors, as, uh, as agents of change in the, in the, on, on your country level, we can look uh, at, at the youth employability policies in much brighter perspectives in the time to come. So uh, what we have now as, as a final uh, part of the conference is actually uh, we have a, a, our special guest from the DG Near who will address us. So uh, we'll just make a very short break and then afterwards we'll come with the final presentation. Uh, thank you very much for being in this panel. My dear panelists, thank you very much for your time, energy, and really enthusiasm to be part of, of this. And let's have a break and then have the presentation of the representative of the commission. come to the final uh, part of the conference and I really have the, the, the privilege to uh, welcome Miss Fanny Sire, if I'm pronouncing this well, from the Center for Thematic Expertise on Economic Governance from DG Near. and she will have a kind of a closing remarks on the, I would say, on the future of the uh, European perspective in uh, supporting youth employability policies in the Western Balkans. Uh, Ms. Ray, it's really nice to have you here now. And just uh, before passing you the floor, uh, this has been a really challenging year for everyone. And if I want to speak in metaphorical terms, when it comes to the European Union, the entity uh, without the borders has encountered a virus which does not know any borders. And it responded very determinedly uh, with several instruments. One of them is Future Generation Europe uh, instrument. And if you look at it, there is a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, dedication towards working with youth. So the youth is recognized as a 
uh, pillar of uh, change, of improvement, of development of the EU. So how does this reflect to the Western Balkans? And uh, we know and we've been aware that European Union has been very much dedicated towards developing policies and practices for youth employment here in the region. But what are the perspectives for the future? So please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for being with of us. The, of the project is uh, indeed very, uh, very important as uh, youth employability and human capital are really at the core of the enlargement process. And this is also uh, under uh, great focus uh, recently and uh, increasingly. Uh, already this week, there were several um, events such as uh, the first youth lab uh, organized by the Regional Cooperation Council on the youth unemployment. Uh, there was also um, an event, a webinar organized by the Western Balkans Young Ambassador on um, human capital and uh, youth employability. Uh, this, uh, this together with, uh, with the, the project um, shows that young people and youth organization really need to be uh, involved um, as, a, as an active player and as a part of the solution uh, to youth unemployment. Uh, and that uh, youth organization, uh, the civil society in the region needs to take part in the policy dialogue uh, with the local uh, authorities, as well as with the international donors that are supporting uh, young people, including the European Commission. Uh, human capital is, uh, is very uh, important uh, for the Commission, and it's a process that uh, needs to happen all along the life. This is why um, we, 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 we promote lifelong learning opportunities uh, to uh, allow for a updating skills, uh, reskilling, uh, changing career, because we are aware that the, the new generation will need to change up to 10 times their job during their life. So this is very uh, important uh, to have young people uh, equipped with the, with the skills and uh, also with the flexibility that they will need. Uh, as regards the, the last development uh, for the Commission, uh, you might already be um, aware that uh, in October this year, uh, the Commission uh, has adopted uh, an economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans that will bring up to 9 billion uh, euro of investment for the region. Uh, this plan um, is articulated around 10 flagships, and one of them um, focuses on, uh, use, um, on use on human capital. And the flagship itself is about supporting um, use guarantee scheme for the region. So what is the use guarantee? You, you might also know what it is. Um, it's an activation scheme that was uh, first developed in the EU uh, from 2013. Um, and it is currently being um, upgraded because of the impact of COVID-19 on young people. Um, so it's being upgraded. Um, and, uh, and now uh, as part of the, um, of, of the plan, uh, the Commission will support uh, the implementation of such uh, schemes in the region. Uh, it, it is already um, implemented in North Macedonia. Uh, first uh, in the country, it started in three uh, more vulnerable regions, and then it's been, um, it started to be uh, implemented at the national level. Uh, so we will continue supporting the scheme in Macedonia, but as well in other uh, countries. Uh, what is important for the use guarantee to, to work is to have um, active labor market measures, but also a very important uh, institutional setup and coordination between uh, the relevant stakeholders. And also there, it's very important to have a youth organization, NGOs, um, private sector uh, representatives, um, SMEs, um, education institution, vet school, uh, social workers uh, involved because all these actors contribute to supporting young people in their path uh, towards employment. We know that uh, the reason behind being a need, so not uh, in education, employment or training can differ and there are many uh, different uh, possible reasons and the Commission is trying to support um, the countries addressing all these possible reasons. Uh, a good example I can uh, also give you um, is an exercise that is being launched in the region uh, now. It's, an it's a diagnosis of the education systems uh, in the region that will take place and that will help um, the, at the same time 
the governments and the donors um, better uh, support reforms in the education system. I want also to, to, to insist um, on the fact that uh, young people uh, need to be involved uh, in uh, policy making processes that, uh, that really have an impact um, on their life. Um, and uh, some other uh, good examples that I can give um, uh, are the following. Uh, the Commission is, um, is coordinating, so it's, it's DG NIR with DG Employment and DG ECFIN. Um, an exercise that um, is called the Economic Reform Program in the region. It takes place in, um, in the, all the enlargement countries. And it is a very high level uh, discussion uh, between uh, ministry, relevant ministries from the EU and from the region. And the, the, the government do an assessment um, of their priority reforms, main challenges, including for young people, in the education sector, in the employment, in the, on the social policies. And this assessment is open for public consultations. So in most countries, the consultations, they started uh, at around end of November and are still open until the end of the year. And the civil society, youth organization, relevant uh, organization can provide inputs. And this is very important because inputs that are uh, given to this um, assessment uh, will be uh, published uh, together with the, with the final assessment that he is then discussed with um, ministries from the member states. So this is also uh, an important consultation where um, civil society uh, from the region can really uh, participate and contribute. Mm -hmm. I, I want also to quickly uh, mention that um, in the context of the program, for the next MFF, we are currently finalizing uh, discussions on the future of the Erasmus program. Uh, and I can already tell you that uh, we, we will focus uh, further on the inclusiveness of the programs uh, with additional um, possibilities for mobility, uh, including shorter term, uh, as well as uh, mobility for VET students and also a stronger uh, use capacity building component. So these can uh, be uh, examples of, uh, of the current development uh, in the Commission. There is a last point that I can mention, and that it is um, uh, the common regional market that was uh, uh, presented and to which um, the countries have uh, shown a stronger commitment um, in Sofia in October. And that also includes um, some elements on human capital, including um, the mutual recognition of academic and professional qualifications that aim at improving the opportunities for students and young professionals in the region. So these are some uh, important elements that are currently um, being developed and that will, um, will represent uh, further support to the youth employability uh, in the region. Mm. I'm yeah, yeah, very much. And yeah, Ms. Sari, thank, you very, thank you very much for this. So thank you for giving us this really nice overview about this. We can now see systematic approach done by the European Union, both on the level of the policies, but you also mentioned Erasmus Plus and so more of a technical support for the youth being more engaged. And perhaps just as a final remark from your side, how you see the future and, and the role of the civil society organization as a counterpart in building sustainable youth employability patterns both on the country and the regional level and how does the European Union sees uh, you, does it see your civil society also as a counterpart and, and a partners in its efforts to improve the overall landscape of the youth employability Indeed, uh, the region is uh, characterized by uh, quite a strong civil society uh, with very uh, good uh, uh, counterpart for, uh, for similar organizations uh, in the EU and uh, they play a very important role because uh, the civil society is a great uh, vector of, uh, of change and, uh, and can uh, sometimes substitute uh, or at least uh, complement uh, what is being done by uh, other institutions. This is the case uh, also uh, in new countries and they play a very important role in particular when it comes to, to youth and the issues of, uh, of employability. They are a very uh, an important actor. So 
continuing uh, our support to the civil society and uh, especially uh, youth organization is really uh, essential. It is also um, the case uh, rela as regard to the, the good neighbor neighborhood relationship. Um, RICO is a very good example of, uh, of this with, uh, with very interesting projects, including mobility for uh, young people in the region. So this is uh, very important to continue uh, strengthen the civil society and have uh, have its members as uh, really uh, strong uh, interlocutors for uh, for the EU. Thank you, thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, so uh, I will just, without any any uh, official closing up, I will just to, to 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 finalize with the messages you have given us about the importance of having civil society as a counterpart, as a partner in further development of the uh, employ employability policies around the region, both on the country and the regional level. So we have seen from this two days conference that there is a lot of space for a success in joint work between civil society organization, youth and public authorities in making uh, the overall picture of youth employability. Uh, so I would say that uh, for us as, as, as a Belgrade Open School, this, this was really an, an, an uh, extensive and very exciting journey. Uh, so thank you for, for being with us. Thank you for supporting this project. And I would just like to thank, so we had like around 200 participants in two, these two days of conference, which in this case is really a uh, we would really like to thank you for being with us. We do hope that the outcomes of the conference were there, that you could grasp some of the tips and takeaways for your future work. Uh, of course, on our official YouTube channel, you can find the recorded conference. And I sincerely hope and I wish to you that you stay safe and take care. And that the next time that we meet, it will be an environment where we will have no cameras, and virtual space around us so that we can have these vivid discussions and debates uh, in a way that we used to do before the pandemic broke out. So thank you very much. For the very end, uh, we would just like to, to uh, 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 show you the video of where we try to capture the, all of the uh, results of our advocacy campaigns and uh, stay safe and take care and we see you in some other uh, encounter or some other moment we can discuss these topics of youth employability. Goodbye.